It's Friday, April 19th, 2024. a Joe's a moron segment because <laughs> I <sighs> what did you that, do that, that Lando has been off for the last two shows I, I did was it two shows oh it yeah shows. I was yes, gone was. for two, two shows. shows fuck yeah it's two shows uh well that's uh, that's by the way Joe's a moron times two because I didn't know when you were getting back so they really didn't need to have two shows but whatever it was fine so that's one. But the other is in those two shows, yeah. anybody who listened to them, I made a huge deal in the openings of those shows about getting a domain for the show. I said, oh, I managed to score support the show dot com for uh, next to nothing. I can't believe yeah. nobody had this this domain. Blah, 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 blah. I'm a, I'm a genius. Look what I did. Blah, blah. Yeah. What happened? OK, well, <laughs> did you spell did you spell it wrong. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I left a T out. So what I have is you have support. Support the show. Support the show. <laughs> however, however, uh. by the way, so you know, I discovered this today just before we started recording. Okay, I realized just, it because I was l- opening late. Listen, listen. My first email, right, that I ever had yeah. was supposed to be one thing and it ended up something else. Because when we are setting up the account, this is like like AOL pre like early AOL days. Um, the person who was setting it up for me, who was like a one of you know how. Did you have a tech genius friend, or were you the tech genius? friend? No, I was. Well, obviously, I was no tech genius, but I. Well, was you know what I mean. The, but the person, I was yeah, the, so I was the co- computer aligned person. Yeah, so I had a friend who was more com- computer aligned from me, and he was the one that kind of walked me through the beginning of my steps through computers, right? And when he was helping me set up my account, because this is this is you know my parents were like, uh, here, yeah, you can you can create this super this internet thing, we'll pay for it. We don't really know how it is, where it works. So my friend and I were setting it up, and he misspelled my email address. So it was supposed to be, um, uh. A uh, a reference to an '80s cartoon, but he left out a letter, and it ended up being completely incomprehensible. So, ah. I totally understand, you know, because I had that email for years, and that was, this one wasn't easy to like change your email. Like that shit was uh, in stone yeah, for a yeah, while there. You know, yeah, it was. You're right. It was yeah. tough. Yeah. Well, so the good news is, yeah. I did get and correctly spelled supportourshow.com. So instead of me having to rattle everything off at the beginning, all I have to say is go to supportourshow, correctly spelled.com. Wow. So that's a, that's, that, that's I was surprised no, that that's was good. available, but I double checked it three times before I purchased it and put the, yeah. the, the, the forward <laughs> in. It is in fact correct. <laughs> Support our show. So if you'd like to support our show, you can go to support our show. Oh, look at that. That's beautiful. Oh, good. It works. You tried it. Yeah. <laughs> well, the forwards usually take a good 30 minutes to go into place. And I only did no, it. No, no. Like, this looks good. Yeah, it all yeah. works. It's all there. Well, I knew all the links on that page work because I've controlled that page forever. But the forward was the thing that I didn't know if I had right. No, but. no. It's great. 
Now, don't get me wrong, supportthashow.com will also work for another about year before I don't renew it, but no, don't use that. That is a uh, that's an easy way to just kind of skip to the chase. <laughs> and I was and I was such a smug asshole about it. Too. I was like, <laughs> what kind of fucking morons left support the show dot com available for a dumbass like me to grab you fools? No, I'm the fool. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> but seriously, if you listen to those shows, you will know that I was like, I'm a genius. Ah, I'm master Who's of the you? internet. Who did you? Oh, God, don't ever say that. Don't ever say master. That's how you bring the don't fates say master on. and internet. Yeah, don't say that. Masters yeah. of the internet. No. Um, out of curiosity, who'd you do the shows with? Uh, the first one I did with uh, Aunt Pruitt, who's been on the show before. And the second one was with uh, Rojan from over. At oh, Rojan. Yeah, I have not. I have not heard from Rojan in forever. Well, we he's not we really doing his show anymore because yeah. he's had some problems with like getting co-hosts that kind of understand podcasting. What a surprise. It's not the easiest thing in the world, even though people seem to think it is. And so, you know, he's kind of doing it when it makes sense to do it, but it's it's more intermittent. So I talk to him all the time because he got into bad movies. So now he and I talk about lots of things. So oh, he, he runs a whole Discord server where well, they we used stream to, bad yeah, movies. Yeah, we used to occasionally uh, run video games together. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so now he's amazing. more into the movie thing. Uh, Got it. Because he doesn't really have time with his job to do game. Well, kind of like, you know, your same thing. It's, yes. You know, oh, yeah. Limited, time yeah. Li- limited times. Yeah. Right. Totally. So, I totally uh, get that. Yes. But like I said, at the opening of both of those shows, I was like, guess who's a genius? Me. <laughs> Look what I got. <laughs> bah, 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 bah. You know, and, and and honestly, I probably should have figured out. That and then I, they, you that know what? Impossible. And then honestly, what happened was the tech lords heard you and they were like, we're going to change something in the Matrix just to fuck this guy. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, but like I said, I was I was fortunate that you I know could what? support our show. It's good. It'll you work. you found you found something that worked though. And that and that's honestly it's not quite as smooth, but it's it's equally it's equally fitting to what people the, the whole reason I wanted to support the show is because that's as I said in my self uh congratulatory rants is everybody says here's how you can support the show but they also say how you can support our show so the fact that i could get one or the other that was just so easy to say i'm just glad i didn't you know print any cards with it on there or anything yet because i've only had it for well i didn't even ever have it but i thought i only had it for a couple of weeks so yeah well right. you know what you got support our show that's fantastic i got support our show that's it is easy. correctly spelled which is amazing yeah that i didn't fantastic. screw it up again and it works i just went to the site it does work so you, do you have to, do you have to do the support segment now? No, that's what I mean. So now the support segment is literally if you'd like to support our show, go to supportourshow.com. That's it. That's the whole hey! segment. Hey, cuz all the that's all fantastic. the mechanisms are there. The Patreon link is there, the PayPal yeah. link. Your book thing is there. No, the, it's all there. I see it. It's all yeah. So it's yeah. all The only thing that's not there is the uh, the code which I keep forgetting. I've forgotten about because I don't know if everybody even uses it, which is the O Z O N E code if you want 2 months free on Libsyn. I forget about that. No, you know what? It. People, if anybody out there still thinks that, that code matters, email. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I mean, as far as I know, it does work. I just, you know. Don't so, I, it, so I saw the funniest thing the other day. And mm-hmm. since I've seen it, I have wanted to tell you about it. But I wanted to tell you about it on the show. No good. Um, because you, you and I have talked to each other playing video games. Um, sure. Uh, have you seen the windshield barnacle? Yes, this did come across my where website oh. did I see this on? Yes, I did see this. They're, they're using this in New York. Yeah. So basically, they they in 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 most cities they have this thing called the boot that they put on your car tire when like you know you park illegally or yeah you know uh, you park you know uh, or your uh, your for whatever reason your car is being towed or something like that they'll put a boot on. But people have gotten brazen with these goddamn things. Well, oh, wait, 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 before you go on, yeah. in case people don't know what the boot is. Well, no, it is yeah, this the boot clamps it is on a, to your wheel. Yeah, it looks it literally it looks like a C, and then it just clamps in on your tire, so you can't. And it drive. stops your it stops your tire from being or yeah. your wheel from being able to but there's, turn. But there's the people who have literally taken their wheel off. Oh yeah. And just yeah. fucked off like a lot, and you know, there, there's yeah. people who are have figured out how to rip them out and things like that. They've had enough problems right. with them that they've come up with this new idea, right? So this is right. the windshield barnacle. And it, it is this giant uh, – it, it basically looks like a plate that goes over your windshield. It has a 1,000 pounds of suction, and it makes it so that you can't see at the front of your car. Now, I'm yeah. sure 
in a couple months, somebody will have some sort of ridiculous like workaround to this. Um, right. But uh, my fr- I, I had a friend who uh, I'm sure that in your life you had one of those friends that was like every time he saw a cop was like fuck the pigs like one of those guys. Oh, of course. Yeah. Okay. That guy. A cab. Whenever- a cab. Ah. Yeah. Whenever he got a boot on his car, he would glue the lock on it. He'd put crazy oh, glue in the that's, lock. That's excellent. And the whole idea was they got to pull it off. And when they pull it off, they can't use it again. And I was like, I'll give you that. I mean, they're, they're still going to take your car, man. I was like, but that is kind of like a, a, a minor sort of passive victory that like, yeah, they're going to have to rip. They're going to have to break that thing to get it off your car now. So, um, so yeah, that's the one thing he did. But so, so they put this barnacle on and I'm, I'm kind of waiting around for from on a reaction, which there hasn't really been much of one yet because they're just kind of preliminarily using it. But I did see one in the wild, um, well, and I looked it up. Yeah, there. This actually was they did this oh three or four years ago, and it was very quickly defeated. And now there's a new version of it that is supposed to not be. That they can't because did you read about what they did with the first version of this thing? How they actually no. they they figured out correctly that for a device to be able to remotely connect back to something, it has to have some kind of connectivity. And what they found with the old version was, oh, there's a SIM card with unlimited data on it. So I guess now we have free unlimited data and they ran up bills on the universities that were using this on their on their cell network because if you take that sim card and put it into anything else uh it's going to work so they basically figured out that if you put on a defroster you could basically break the seal pretty easily because the heat does it and then when they looked at it they noticed it had a sim device oh my god that's hilarious so now the nypd has its new one that is supposed to be (laughs) you know that can't be defeated that way Uh, i told you somebody's gonna figure it out in like like a couple weeks (laughs) yeah the first yeah. one was defeated by the defroster. I love it. Well, I, but and this idea that they're always uh, going to figure out how to defeat the one that the NYPD is using. No, they're going break. to. Of course they will. They're yeah, going course. to. So People stupid. figured out how to fuck with the boot. I know. You know. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's. I I I wanted to mention it to you because I knew I knew that it had probably come across your your desk. Yeah. Yes. And the only reason I didn't really think about it too much is because but it's, they they haven't defeated the new one yet. But they I know. Will. <laughs> they they will. Will. Yeah, and that's and the thing is like so right now I'm writing near future fiction and I'm always trying to figure out like what kind of things are you going to see what kind of crazy shit are you well, going to see in the near future. Let me tell you what the reality is. This yeah. this this is nothing. What's going to happen is because now at some point outside of vintage cars that don't yeah. have computers, oh, they they're going to just turn your car off. Yeah, well, yes, that's exactly right. Yeah. What they're going to do is they're going to kill the car. There's going yeah. to be a point where they will have things inside the car because they already do. I mean, it's just right now private companies have it. Well, it's only a matter of time. They're going to have a thing where as soon as you speed, you're not going to have to have a cop catch you. It's going to report it. It's just going to say, okay, I, I measured the check-in time from oh, this light to this light and you're I'm speeding. Telling you, I'm telling you right now, the second my car becomes a speeding ticket self-reporting, I will be in a, in a fucking Roadrunner, like an old, uh, what was well, that, look, look, 70s, don't, listen, 60s Roadrunner? Gonna, uh, and the next thing is going to be that they're going to require for the registration of vintage vehicles that a chip is put in them. Ooh, and they'll, yeah. they'll say it's going to be anti-theft or for tracking or whatever, and that's yeah, what it's going to be. You know, but it'll you buy me. It'll, it. it'll buy me a little more time. Oh, it's a ways off. I mean, yeah. And honestly, a whole listen, bunch of you know laws what? And stuff I used to changed. be. I used to be against self-driving cars, right? And yeah. honestly, I'm not against it anymore. If 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 the technology worked, it won't. I honestly wouldn't mind a self-driving will. car. Well, I know that, but I'm will. saying I, I wouldn't mind if they had self-driving cars at this point because, you know what? There are plenty of days where, yeah, I would rather just get in the car, tell it where to go, and then read a book. There are a number of people who know a lot about this stuff, and they are all saying that level five is never going to happen. Or by the time it does, cars will not be used anymore. That's the other end of it is at some point. What the hell are they going to use then? No, well, you're going to have mass transit systems. You're going to because younger people are not buying cars. Car, car sales well, because they're so fuck off up. expensive. Well, there's that. Listen, and yeah, the bigger problem. The if the uh, well, yeah, especially if you live in a city. But the, the bigger right. issue, I think, a lot of the stuff is the in, in the psychotic inflation of the price. Well, there's not only that, but I, I I've yeah. seen a Someone. lot of people using motorized bicycles. 
Oh, I know that, but I'm saying if, if somebody gets smart and makes some kind of skeleton crew car, because I mean, at the end of the day, these these motor these you know like oh like moped bikes or something like that, it's it's a it's a skeletized motorcycle that doesn't go high speeds. I'm surprised yeah. that somebody hasn't just made like some kind of three seater, uh, um, you know, uh, wireframe car that costs like a thousand dollars. You know that can technically be on roads, or at well, least because, be on certain because roads. Because I don't think the safety systems could match up to getting hit by a real car. Well, yeah, but guess you what? If you're right. on a bicycle and you get hit by a car, the safety systems I hear don't uh, don't yeah, really hold up. Yeah, but you know what? It's a strange <laughs> psychology that people oh have electric this bikes weird thing. Yeah, I know I where know, a I bike know. to them. I I it's so it, I've talked have to you, people and there's this strange used... mentality that you notice. Have you where, used those those electric kinetic bikes where like it takes your force and then it like quantifies it up? So you're like so you know you're you're doing like fifty miles per hour on a bike. Have you seen these? I've seen them. I've never used okay. them because I don't know how to ride a bike. If you wipe the fuck out on one of those, yeah. you're going like forty miles per hour. Oh, I know. But people I'm telling you, there's a divide where people It's a bike, it's okay. That's it. That well and and plus there's this for many, not all, but many yeah. people who are into bikes, there's this yeah. low level bike superiority where they're like, well, uh, I have a bike. I drive, and I, I I drive can, a bike. Yeah, I know. Okay, they'll yeah. move for me. It's like, okay. Yeah, they'll move they to you move. right into the point where you, you encounter a drunk driver, an asshole, a psycho, yeah, yeah, yeah. or somebody that just doesn't see your ass. Right. You know, which, and then which, you by the are way, fucking is why, pizza. Which is why full self driving will never work because it will have to anticipate oh, those people. The, was it in San Francisco where it was hit, where it was just hitting people? Well, there was the one that yeah, the cruise that they stopped <laughs> in the Thailand because they dragged a pedestrian. All right, all right. So let me give you let me give you my near yeah. future theory for driving cars. Right, I'm sure. So, um, in my near by the future way, idea, by the way, I've said yeah. multiple times the only way it works is it's everybody or nobody. That's the only way. Yeah. It well, I this mix. Well, That's see, the I created a self driving car lane. <laughs> in my near future world where essentially you switch your car to self-drive and it moves you to this outer lane that is everything is essentially hooked up with magnets. And as long, and as long as you're in self-drive mode, you stay there. And the second you, and everyone is basically lined up like a train car almost. Right. And you're going slower than normal traffic, but you also don't hit traffic because everything is slowed to be able to go. And then the second you shut off the self-drive, the magnet, the magnets basically got, calmly they don't like throw you they calmly push you out into the uh, normal lanes of traffic that's my my star trek vision of the, of the near future because i was trying to think like you know what kind of technologies you might come up with because you're right it's either everybody or it's nobody and the problem is you can't have self-driving cars on a highway with you know maniacs because what? the computer won't know it, it's the whole listen we don't have full ai yet why because we can't teach these goddamn computers to understand the absolute batshit madness, which is reality. Okay? Like, yeah. it's just, it's not going to work. And, and you know, machine learning can do a lot of things, but machine learning has a really hard time with stupid. Like, this is this is the, the, the logic problem that, uh, I almost called them Klingons, the Vulcans have with humans, where it's like, sure. why would you do something? That's stupid. And they're like, well, it seemed like a good idea at the time. And they're like, it's not logical. And they're like, well, I don't really know what you mean. It, you know, it, it's it's mixed stupid logic. I'm good, you know. And that's the thing is, it's trying to teach, trying to teach a computer that sometimes people do stupid shit. It just doesn't compute. It does not. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. that's, but that's that's what that's, I'm a, that's a play in itself, right? You create the first. You create the first near ai and you basically have to sit down in a room with it and and talk to it about the the state of humanity and trying to explain human stupidity Mm. (laughs) explain the darwin awards yeah that that's the thing it it does not know how to compute that stuff you're exactly right that's that's and nobody runs into a robot but honestly it also it's also that nobody thinks that things are going to go wrong for that you know well, yes, but the but the fundamental problem with any type of computerized system yeah. is you cannot program in the erratic actions of people. You, no. you just yeah. you cannot. There's so many multiples of factors that can cause somebody to make a mistake. Yeah, and, you know? and and that's not even 
like we're counting out all the people who are trying to make mistakes just people who make natural mistakes then yeah. you add in the people yeah. who are actively trying to fuck the system well that, well and you know yes, my, you're, you're my correct wife. that part too but just the idea of <laughs> yeah. just trying to get a a full self-driving car yeah to deal with drivers who are distracted that just that yeah. oh yeah everything so, else just try that so my, and, and they can't handle it my son is playing uh, Overwatch a little bit, right? Yeah. Um, he does. He he's not thrilled about it. He kind of comes and goes, but every now and then he heads back in and he's he's like, I want to get, you know, I want to do this, and he uh, he's doing the a, the AI versus thing right now. He's not playing real people. He's playing with real people against the AI, right? Sure. And he's like, I'm gonna get really good, and then I'm gonna go against the uh, the the people. And every now and then I'll jump in and I'll play a game against real people so he can see what madness looks like right and it's funny because he's kind of at the edge of the difficulty that the ai goes right and the ai uh, is logical right so he kind of knows where they're gonna go he knows what it's gonna do and there's a few times where his team got like they one game they got team kill like six times and i'm like dude it's because the computer is behaving in a logical fashion that you can make sense of so then we went and we played against people and people are nuts and people are vicious and clever and do kinds of fucked up shit that you don't count on. So, you know, he played one game and he got decimated and I played one game and you, you mean, you know how my brain works with these things and yeah. I was doing shit in this game and he was like, this doesn't make any sense. Why are you doing that? And I'm like, because it's not about winning as an individual. It's about doing things that terrorize the other team so they stop trying to win and just want to kill you. And he's like, but then they kill you. And I'm like, yeah, but it doesn't matter because you have infinite lives. So like um, I was I, I kept doing things like going behind, going beyond uh, behind the enemy team and setting up turrets. So then, then they wouldn't have to come back and deal with me and like all this stuff. And he's like, but he's like, but they're destroying you. And I'm like, yeah, but every minute they're destroying me is a minute that they're not moving the uh, the goal forward. And like I realized that this there's this whole tactical philosophy that like my son hasn't gotten because he's playing the game on a very sort of instinctual level, um, and also it's this understanding of people. You know, if you get behind the enemy team, people are going to come after you. They get angry. They get annoyed. Yes. They forget about winning because they want to destroy you. I was like, and this is how you win. You manipulate them against their own, you know, better judgment, against their own logic, right? Um, and, I, and so my wife overheard me kind of explaining my my whole logic behind these first-person shooter games. Um, and my son knows it works because, like, every time I, I sit down, like, you know, I get destroyed, like, some of the time. But then a lot of times I'll get, like, play of the game and shit like that and we'll win. And it's like, yeah. And I'm not like a dynamo, but if I have a team that's good – my tactics help quite a bit. My wife hears me going on about this shit, and she's like, "You know, at some point they're gonna put machine learning in these games, and these oh, yeah. uh, she goes, and these AIs, these NPCs are gonna catch on to your game." And she and she was laughing about it, and then she was basically, and she said, "And don't wait, don't worry." She's like, "You and Joe," she's like, "The shit you get up to in these games," she's like, "NPCs are gonna figure it out." And I'm like, well, we can only hope. <laughs> it's like, ooh, <laughs> like, I would love it. I would love it if the game got smart to us trying to break it. I, you know? well, I mean, number one, I don't, I don't necessarily disagree, but at the same time, AI stuff that that stuff's already there. It's it is to some degree, there, you know? yeah. But but, but it I mean, but it behaves there. but it behaves logically. Well, that's it's the thing. not going yeah. to simulate. That's the thing. What people want in games is not well, the, AI. The other thing is, they I want don't, simulated I don't, humanity. They I don't want know NPCs. If it will catch on to what you're doing, and here's why. Yeah, it will probably because I doubt most people play like you or I. So it will probably discard us as in the margin Outliers. of error. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. The, yeah. the bell curve. Yeah. We're at yeah. the edge of the bell curve. Yeah. But either way, I, people don't want AI. They don't want logic. They want uh, NPCs to act like people. And people are illogical and, and that's, emotional. Yes. That's the fun. And that's what people thing. want. They want. They want people in their games. You know, honestly, the most amazing thing you could do in a video game. I'm surprised no one's done this yet. Is hire people to be the NPCs. 
you know like if you have like one of these these open world games like fallout 76 or something like that you know which is a yeah. which we'll talk about fallout later sure um have a few characters in that game that are just real people they're npcs in the game but when people come and talk to them they are real people talking to them in real time reacting to them that would be incredible well they are they are working on a version of that i don't know how far they've gotten but they are working on a version of that they have uh, several companies are in fact i think it was I either want to say it was Square Enix or Ubisoft has said that that is that they are applying this idea of having dynamic NPCs. Yeah. And, you know, ones that you would never hear the same piece of dialogue twice and it would know your actions. It would track them. Yeah. Which, you know, the, the, I don't think those types of systems are inherently. Well, I, when I say not inherently difficult, I'm using that in a loose way. Of course, they this is a heavy programming <laughs> challenge. It's all, is, it's all difficult, but in the realm of difficulty. Yeah, this is one of those things where there's a more... I just don't think they want to have to pay the employees and worry about the human interactions. Well, okay, you're sort of getting to where I was going. There's a bigger yeah. problem that is now becoming very evident. I mean, it was already evident to anybody really paying attention, but it's now becoming impossible to miss, which is... Video games have become too expensive and too big. That's just the reality. Yeah, they're, 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 they're huge. They're not yeah. yeah, it's ridiculous. And so there's going to have to be a, I don't know, a, there's going to have to be a real reevaluation of, I did a five on this actually, this, no, last week, where I said that after Baldur's Gate 3, because a long time ago we talked about with Fallout, again, to go back to Fallout without going to the show yet, there's this big divide between people who think that the first original Fallout games, oh, the, the 90s first iter- and 2000s, okay, yeah, 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 one, two, and Tactics, really. Although Tactics yeah. isn't considered canon, even though it's really should be. And then you get to Bethesda and Fallout Three and after, and there's two groups of people, and very few in between. Or, and I shouldn't say very few, but there's there's this big divide between a lot of fans who are like, well, no, one and two were it. And everything after that is garbage. And then the other side of it, where people are like, one and two are impossible to play. They're too hard and they're boring. The new ones are great. But, and, and Bethesda is awesome, yeah. Yeah, and then there's people like me who think that both are good. They're just very different games. I Listen, I appreciate the early ones, but I really enjoyed playing the Bethesda ones. Well, the thing is, though... And I haven't even after, played Vegas. After playing... Oh, New Vegas is very good. Um, hopefully they remaster 3 in New Vegas. There are talks that that will happen. If it does, you really should play New Vegas especially. It's very good. But... There, after playing Baldur, after Baldur Gate Three's humongous success, my question was: Is there possibly a consideration inside of Microsoft, who now owns Bethesda and the Fallout IP, to make two versions of Fallout? Because why not make a new version in the old style and the new one in Bethesda style? Why not capitalize and get two groups of people? Because they'd have to, they'd have to ch- survey that to see how much money there is to to make. Well. Sure, but Baldur's Gate 3 has proved there is an audience for those games. So if you yeah. make a game, it would have to be self-contained. It would have to be a single-player experience, probably, or something like Wasteland 3, which is what I would actually push for, is to have the companions be playable by people or to have the companions be other players. So almost what 76 was doing, but in a way that has a storyline, not a bring-your-own-story-to-it, because that cratered like a nuclear bomb. So <laughs> It did for most people. It's different for most people, and then you have people who really who are deep into well, we'll create, own, we'll make our own basic version of this game. But th- that's for people who have, let's say, a group of twenty or so people where there will role play, where ten of them play the enemies and ten play the guys. You know what? Around. We found we found a lot to do in that game. I mean, there was an end point, but we found a lot to do. Yeah, but we also went back a couple times and got bored very quickly. You know, that's where the single well, player yeah, but, part. Yeah. We explored. I mean, as a pair, we explored it quite a bit, and then we got to a point where we're like, okay, we've done everything there is to do. But but if we replay it, there's. I mean, outside of the cycling of the new little mini DLCs, there isn't. It's not like Wasteland where we ran it again and made different choices. It's not like Baldur's Gate. Yeah, and that's and the thing is, we're choices. We're currently replaying. We started replaying Baldur's Gate finally. Yes. And we've gone on. We've we've gone in and we're playing completely different people. Very so Joe different is, characters. Yeah. So Joe is playing Gale now, who's the wizard, and he's playing Asterion, who's the asshole yeah. vampire. Yeah. And I and I made a, a built I built a character, 
uh, Bard, who Joe came up with the great name of calling him John Bar Jovi. That, so yes, uh, I am I am I am the fabulous John Bar Jovi, and then I'm playing. I haven't decided yet who my second is. And what I what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to basically make every other character in the game druids. So anytime we need to to pick somebody for a storyline thing, like we need, uh, you know, to bring Will or we need to bring Shadowheart, some shit like that, they'll all be druids. So the gameplay will not change for me. And I want because I wanted to play druids on this run, but just picking these different characters. And playing these different cal- uh, classes has made it very different. Like, there's a lot of shit popping up that I don't remember at all. I mean, there's shit I've forgotten, but there's all this new shit that is going on. And it's because we've got all these new people and these new storylines, you know? And, uh, yeah, oh, so God. it's, uh, what? JohnBarJovi.com is available. Oh, we don't need it. We don't need it. <laughs> I, I seriously, I searched because I was like, well, somebody, I, I actually first just looked for that name because I was sure somebody else must have come up with that in Baldur's Gate, but apparently no, no John, has. Yeah, John Bar Jovi is fantastic. And playing a bard. I came up with that before me if, if, it, if in fact, they didn't. And playing a bard is fantastic. <laughs> oh, it's great. It's great. I mean, we've already um, used it to enhance Asterion's uh, theft abilities, which is fantastic. There you go, yeah. yeah. Um, and that's, yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's when you start to build a really good team where like everything kind of lines up, you know? Yeah. Uh, but, but yes, different choices. And it is becoming a different game. And even though we're, we're eventually going to end up in a lot of the same places, it's not going to be the same right. because the characters are different. So even though our decision-making, you know, but I don't think I could ever do a, uh, an evil playthrough, like, like, no, a, like a bad guy playthrough, yeah. because I don't think I could spend that many hours being a bad guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's a, that's like a 150 hour game. At least that's what but, it was the last but there time. again, that's the if they were to make a game like that where you could replay it with different choices, then I would yeah. I would play yeah. that game. And I think there is a large audience, and Baldur's Gate three has demonstrated that because prior to yeah. Baldur's Gate three, you I think there was some doubt about it, and you know reasonably so. No, and people it, like, and do it's, people really want this game anymore? And, and you know, it is fantastic when you do it fantastically like this. Then yeah, people want it. People right. want good product. So, you know, but but it's the whole we want, you know, one of the things what what works in Baldur's Gate, what works is the writing is very good. And the characters that you deal with feel like people. Carlac yeah. is a sweetheart. Shadowheart is a bitch. But funny, Asterian is a psychopath who is comedic as fuck. Everybody yeah. has these personalities. So it, it, it goes, it, you know, it's, it's not that we want we like we don't want A.I. We want humanity. Like that's right. kind of the funny thing about it. It's like when people talk about wanting to build AI, like I don't think we want AI. I think really what we want is to build other people. Non corporeal people. <laughs> well, yeah, because they you know, you what you want is organic responses. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that's what I'm saying is that they're I just don't remember if it was Square Enix or Ubisoft is support that they're saying that's what they're working on, is to have dynamic NPCs where because there are the systems that track your decisions are not new. Those have been around no. forever. So yeah. you can, that's already there. It's the ability for the machine to, because this is part of now with generating voices and stuff like that, where to try to have somebody record every single line is impossible. You have to limit it because you have people there forever and they would never be able to, it still would never be able to capture every permutation of whatever yeah. somebody does in the game. But a, a, a machine generated one, that was being fed all your choices and decisions that could synthesize a voice. Well, that can, that could do it. Now, the bad thing about that is, you know, voice actors do just like real actors add things that a machine will not, it won't understand humor the same way. Yeah. So can it really work? I don't know. We'd have to see a demonstration, but I mean, every to now attempt at machine humor has been pretty awful. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> when it's tried to do it itself. Cause I know people say, Oh no, 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 no. When it's, when somebody just tells a machine to generate its own humor, it can't do it. It's, it's, it is well, ironically highly sure. robotic and it's not funny. I know people, I know people who can't generate their own humor. Well, yes, there is that as well, but no. that's, that's the trick with that is there's machines have limitations. Could you replace most NPCs that don't really do much but have background voice work? Sure, you could probably do that. Do you really need somebody just sit there in the background for walking through a town? A little no, no, but you go for generated? the you go for the main characters, the main NPCs, yes. right? You know, and that's where you can 
there are things that give the illusion of free choices that you can have any permutation, but of course they actually do have limits. And that's where a main character, like in Baldur's Gate, where all the main characters, you know, there's only so many directions you can go and then they have responses for those. But even we ran into some, for example, the, what was, there was something, we just did one where there was dialogue and the two of us talked to the same character and ultimately, it, no matter what you said or how you said it, you got to the same Oh, it was kind a polo. You got funneled down. No, it wasn't. It, well, no, the, not the eye thing. It was somebody okay. else. There was something else <laughs> where we took different avenues, and ultimately that character said the same thing at the end because the you story know, couldn't allow you to deviate yeah. from that because it wouldn't work. So yeah, it ends up in the same place. Yeah, there is only so much you can do with that. You still are going to be constrained by the storytelling. Now, I'm sure that in some idealized world, which doesn't exist. They would say, oh, no, no, we'll let the machine want, just generate the story as you go. And it's like, oh, what okay, I really want to do is I want to do an, an asshole run of Baldur's Gate where we kill anybody that we think's an asshole. Like, good or good or evil, we kill everybody. Because remember, there's that one character, the druid in the, in the first part of the game that wants to kick all the refugees out. You well, know, you, can, then, you can wipe that town out. No, no, I know that, but I want to kill just her. And there's a the thing yeah. is, you, you could because. They put her way out in the front gate. No, no, no. After but, she's but been... see, yeah, you can't. Yeah, yeah. What you're talking about is technically within the rules of the game, you probably could, right? Yeah, yeah. But realistically, yeah. we are newcomers who just strolled in. If we killed oh, yeah, the yeah. head of the grove, they would want to kill all of us. It makes no. Sense. I know that, and that's why you wait. That's the thing is, it's not about doing it when you first meet them. It's that wait till you get powerful enough, and then come like right before you leave the area, come back and just kill her. And I want actually. I wonder if there's a reaction to that. If you wait till you solve the grove problem and you're about to leave, you know, you, and they've already celebrated you, and you're and it's, everything's all buttoned up, and you're about to leave, right? Can you go back and just kill her, and get no reaction out of it? Or will Halson yeah. be like, "I can't believe you can fucking kill her"? <laughs> like, like I wonder yeah. if if the game is sitting there going, "I didn't think that they'd do that. Why would why would they do that?" And it's like I, I wonder if it has made. Um, because there's well, things in the okay, game. Okay, here's something interesting yeah. because okay, there I just I was looking for something. I was like, well, what if you just kill Halson up uh, right up front? Can you progress the game? You can. Oh yeah, you, yeah. You, it you, just, you have to you have to speak with the dead. Otherwise, you cannot progress the game. You, oh, so you extract there you go. the information from his corpse. Otherwise, you don't know what to do. Well, there you so, go. So they, I like that they thought about it. Yeah, because yeah. that's that's the uh, Walker thing, right? Where I was sure that the Walker. Oh thing was yeah, fly the game, <laughs> yeah. and it was like oh, you no, kill Walker, and that. they were like, "No, no." I mean, you have eliminated the the biggest source of comedy in this game, but we've got eighty eight keys here. But which, which is sense, what we called his uh, second in command. Yeah. In a sense, I was the idiot there because this is the company that, in every Far Cry, lets you just join the villain in the opening of the game. So I should have known <laughs> that they would anticipate that some asshole would come along and say, "Well, what if I figure out how to kill Walker? What are you going to do then, genius?" And it was like. We're fine. We're just going to shift it to his lieutenant because he doesn't matter anyway, everybody. Joke's on you. Ha, ha, ha. Dopes. Well, to stay in the realm of games. Oh, before uh, we go to games, because yeah. I will forget this. All right, one, little, one little public service announcement for people. There is a project that originally started off called 4K77 and then went to 4K83 and now has 4K80. Some people will know what this is right off the bat. But for those who don't know what this is, this is a group of people who found 36 millimeter prints of the original Star Wars films with no alterations. This was the what were in the theaters in the years they were released. They got the reels. They have scanned them in 4K. They have cleaned them wow. up only to eliminate problems. And they have released them in full 4K resolution. And the one that they couldn't find the print for for the longest time was Empire. And they found it and they've completed it. So now, all three films can be downloaded. I'm not going to tell you how because I don't want to get on Disney's bad side. But they're, it's very easy to figure out. You can go find them. The files are around 90 gigabytes apiece. But they are, in fact, beautiful, undisturbed original prints with all the defects but also none of the new defects and you can go find them and it is worth the effort if you want to see the originals because there's no other way to watch them in 4k and they are gorgeous i have been told so <laughs> <laughs> i caveat that with so i've heard from a yes. friend who has the files yeah so 
just uh, to let everybody know, 4K80 has been completed. Uh, the Rev 1, they, they've done multiple Revs on the other ones where they've gone in and just kind of fixed little things to make sure it's all color graded. So I'm sure there will be multiple versions, but even in its original form, I have been told that it looks stellar. So if you want to see the, the thing that apparently nobody wants, that Disney wants us to see, go find those and you can get them in 4K and watch them on a beautiful big television. So I've been told, and they will look excellent. I actually meant to bring that up in the last like three shows and I keep forgetting. So before I forgot, I actually had the tab. No, no it's, it's good because yeah. we're, we're basically shifting to video game yes. TV. So. Um, so Joe has a Joe will have a full review for Fallout 76 because he's going to finish the I'm sorry, Fallout the show because yeah, he's going to finish sure. it long before I do. Um, but I have watched the first episode and Joe has watched many more. And so. we're just going to do our preliminary sort of reactions to watching it. Um, so that, uh, and then we'll later on when Joe can do his full review and after he's seen it all. Um, I'm going to tell you right up front. So this is this is the Fallout show that Amazon did, that is done by um, Nolan Joy. Name? Yeah, Lisa Nolan Joy. And Joy. And Jonathan Nolan. The West. Yeah, the West, Jonathan Nolan is his name, and Lisa the Joy. The Westworld yeah. folks. The Westworld folks. There's a moment in that ep- opening episode where there's a painting on the wall. And I realized that it was one of the fucking paintings from Fallout 76. Right? Like, yep. and I realized, holy shit, the level of detail on this show is insane. Oh, yeah. That, that said, it is a really well done show. Like, even for people who don't know Fallout, like, my wife doesn't really know Fallout, and she was still, like, she was pulled in. She was fascinated by the world. Yes. Um, What do you, I mean, I, I, I know you enjoy it, right? Oh, I, I am stunned. <laughs> stunned at how excellent the show is because it, as you said, will work fine. In fact, I am going to have my wife watch it. I think it is that good. Where even though she's not necessarily, she doesn't know anything about Fallout. It doesn't matter. They they give you everything you need to know if you're not someone who knows Fallout. But beyond that, it does not require you to be into this type of thing. And and they get into they get into the nightmare of some of the other vaults too, don't they? I've read that. Oh yes. Well that and that's what and we've talked about before. (laughs) One of the things that a Fallout series should do, yeah, is to capitalize on. Really, the there are it, there yeah. are three major things that when Fallout is at its best, it toys with. One is the vault system, just the the vaults and what experiments are going on there. And boy, yeah. they go into that hard, which is great because I wasn't sure based on the trailers, whether they would get into that or whether they were going to be focusing on. Well, there's vault tunnels. That was one of that was one of the things that kind of threw me off is that I don't remember there being vault tunnels, like vaults that were connected. Oh, uh, well, OK. I don't I don't recall, at least in the newer games, I did not yeah. play all the way through one and two, so I can't tell you that. But I don't recall any vaults that were directly connected like this. Yeah. But there were. But it makes sense. I mean, there's a lot of them. Well, there there were connections between faults. I just don't remember any that were yeah. directly. But of course, this this setup as well is an experiment. This is a specifically done thing because yes. of what they're doing. It's not. This is not the normal way. This is because they are conducting a specific experiment that requires three vaults. See, that's the thing. So this would not be something yeah, they would do everywhere it is, because uh... it's a one-off to see what will happen. Yeah. I- like you said, I, I am stunned that it came off. I mean, the oh, it gets better. You're only in the first episode. It gets only the first episode, yeah. Better. But but I mean, yeah. the the ghoul looks good. Oh, his um, story is great. The the his story is great. The Brotherhood of Steel looks fantastic. I mean, well, that and now that's the other thing that was because I was saying there was three things. One is the vault. Yeah. The other is the Brotherhood of Steel because one everybody of the knows those suits. Well, no, well, not just that, but one of the criticisms of Bethesda's handling of the series, and I tend to agree with it, is they they sanded off a lot of the challenging morality of the Brotherhood specifically, but aspects of the Fallout world. So the Brotherhood in the in the new games comes off 
pretty heroic, more or less. They come off as good people. They have they have their moments. They're they're they're. I mean, even in the seventy six, they have some late, later Brotherhood of Steel quests where it's you 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 see the divide between those that want to help the people and those that just wanted to to uh, basically control the technology. Well, there's that, but further than that, there is the the inherent kind of religion and religious corruption. Yes, that the yes, the has. religious aspect to it. And yeah. you will see, Scribes, you haven't seen yeah. how far that gets into it because you will, Maximus is an abused child. He is essentially, for all intents and purposes, he might as well be a child of the, the Catholic pedophile scandal for the way this series handles it, which is correct because the Brotherhood is not a good organization. It started off with noble intentions, as many organizations do before they go off the rails, and it has become something else. And the show is is very specific about displaying those challenging aspects of the Brotherhood that, again, Bethesda largely kind of went away from. And they decided to make them mostly the good guys. They may they may be a little bit See, militant yeah. in their viewpoints, but and they're I essentially never... good guys. I never thought they were necessarily the good guys. I always thought that the Brotherhood of Steel was its own faction. The same well, way that the, the new the, the the new settlers are are a faction and the uh what is it? The the fucking the nutters, the the ra- not the ravagers, what the fuck are they called? The raiders. The raiders. The raiders yeah. are their own faction and everybody thinks they're right. Ye- well, yes, except the Brotherhood again in the games is often positioned as if they are kind of right Four messed with that a little bit, but not much. 76 barely's touched the brotherhood in a meaningful way. Three was basically three was, they were heroes. You could join them and it was like, yay, let's go get them. Da, 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 da. And new Vegas, they weren't really a factor the way they were in the other games. New Vegas got more concerned with the NCR, the new California Republic, which now you haven't gotten to this yet, but that was one moment where, there's a part where Lucy is in a vault again and she finds the new California Republic flag and they play the Fallout 4 theme. Okay. And I will admit I had a strong reaction to that because because they stay away from that so much. They use just a lot of period music throughout, but they don't no, really go to the theme very often. The In fact, show, I don't think anywhere else. It looks amazing. Oh, it's, like I got, tried to they, buy the vault Tech cup immediately and I can't find it anywhere. I was like, oh, I want that coffee mug. I want The it. attention to detail is just insane. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, I was uh, it was it's funny you were talking about the idea of people being the AIs because Tim Kaine, who was one of the original producers of the original Fallout games, was invited to the premiere party for the show. Yeah. And I watched his his reaction to it because I was curious because, again, yeah, so much of this show is based on the new Fallout. It, it really feels like it is mostly informed by Fallout four really i mean that's what it looks the most like just because fallout four is the most oh, i think i think there's a quite a bit of 76 in there as well visually 76 three there's i mean it's all in there it's it's the yeah. modern version and he had said that at one point he noticed a background character who was walking in a very specific way and he said i'm pretty sure that guy based his walk off of a npc character in fallout one that walked in this certain way that we, we called them the losers because that was like a nickname for them and he said, because he has this hunched walk. And he's like, I don't think anybody else would even notice it, but I saw it. And I went, huh. Because a lot of the people that are the background people are Fallout fans. They actually let people who like the games be the background extras. Oh, wow. So he's like, I'm wondering if that guy did the walk from one because, because he, he was knew a fan it. Of the games. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's yeah. funny. That's all that little stuff. But yes, there's a lot of it in there. The stim pack is great. Uh, <laughs> yeah, in particular, pack. because there's a moment where. Okay, the first episode. The first episode, do you see the dog in the first episode? I don't think so. No, you don't really. You, no. don't, you just see a picture of it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, because when the dog gets killed, I was immediately. Oh, no. Yeah, but not for long because stim packs fix everything. So the dog gets a stim pack and he's back on his feet because the ghoul stabs him and kills him and then stim packs him because he's still alive and then he's back on his feet and now he's his companion which is very much like the games like the companions will move so the dog's like well I don't care I'm with you now and so now he's the ghoul's companion and oh, so the, the dog ghoul has shifts dog around. meat uh, well he's not called dog meat but in fact there is a part where somebody there's a vendor who has meat and it says dog meat and I was like okay I get it that's that's good I like that yeah there's always there's always a dog yeah yeah there is always a dog and the dog has survived everything so far which is great um <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah. I, 
I mean, Kyle McLaughlin, getting Kyle McLaughlin to be the overseer was a was a great note because he can play goofy and funny, but then it can also shift to fucking oh, and serious it will, as hell. Because he is not a good guy. Oh, is he, is he part of the Enclave? No, he's part of Vault Tech. Oh, well, there you go. And, they mentioned man, en- Enclave so early on, too. Yeah, which is odd because... Because that's something that Bethesda's never really wanted to touch. No, oh no, that's not true. They they were the major antagonists of three. You were fighting the Enclave, and then true, in New yeah. Vegas, there is a uh, arcade Ganon is the I can't remember if he's the son or if he's one of the remnants, which is what's left of the Enclave because you destroyed them. Uh, so they're still around, but and then Modus is in seventy six is essentially pre Enclave. Seventy yeah, and, that's, and I think that's the thing is that I got so used to, to seventy six, which is considered to be pre. It's before Fallout three, right? It is the most recent one in yeah. the modern canon. Yes. Oh, sorry. It is the, the one earliest that takes one. place the earliest from earliest, when the bombs yeah. fell. Yes. Yeah, that's why people were so annoyed that the um, that the, the super mutants were already there. Oh, and well, the, yeah, and the Brotherhood. Who well, the brother. Still, well, the Brotherhood are there, but it, they're there. Well, they're in not a supposed very... to be. They were never. Yeah. It's one of those things where why did we never hear about this? And that you know what, people, you have to let that shit go. It, who cares? Okay, it's fine. You can. Ru- Whatever they can make up a reason. It's not that big a deal. These are the things that yeah. people get. And hung it's not up like they have. Like, yeah, it's it not like go. they have a huge city. They have an outpost there. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, and the Brotherhood were the ones who found the the what do you call it? The Queen, the Scorch Beast. And all. But that's yeah. fine. That's what the that's what the Brotherhood did. It's not just because you didn't hear about it doesn't mean that there weren't stealth reconnaissance guys no, running I, around. I thought that the first episode was a great setup for everything, for the oh, world, for the, how weird it's going to get, how violent and bloody it can get. Oh, you know. boy, does it. Oh, just wait. Just wait. <laughs> yeah, I've read that it gets quite. Uh, oh, it's quite gory. Quite gory later I on. mean, it's yeah, <laughs> it's very gory. Uh, but um, I did. I did read that there was a there was a scene, I think, in the second episode where the ghoul meets another goal, ghoul ghoul. Which is genuinely like kind of heartbreaking. Oh no, that's it's not. I don't think it's the second episode. I think it's the third one. But yes, there okay. is a scene where he runs into somebody he knows who's going feral. Yeah. And basically, it's implied that if you don't take this, you see him taking when they dig him up. Remember, he yeah. had those those bags that were running in there. Yes, yes, medication. What, that stuff is what keeps you from going feral. There's a chemical. That's why he's an addict. And so, if you don't regularly take this stuff, the feralization accelerates. They basically imply that. He might be one of the longest running ghouls who has not gone feral. And so he meets this guy and the guy is halfway to, and he's like, he's, he's flipping out. And he basically says to him, he's like, Hey, you better leave because you know, I've made it a long time longer than most, not as long as you, but I think it's coming to an end and I don't know if I'm going to be able to control myself. So you better leave. And the guy and the ghoul says something to the effect where he's like, he's like, ah, oh. He's like, you know what? You're going to be fine. Then he's like, oh, do you remember, you know, uh, how your mom used to make? He's like something about it. And the ghoul's like, oh, yeah. And he's like, and he looks at Lucy and he's starting to talk about it. And then the ghoul shoots him and blows his brains out because he doesn't want him to go feral because he knows he's going to. Yeah. And it is a sad scene. And 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 the other the, the I think they did a really smart thing in the show. And this is actually good for you because now you can pay attention to this. They they have three characters who represent three stages of the dissolution of the American dream in whatever form you want to take it. Lucy is at the very beginning. She is yes. naive and does not understand what the world is. She has yeah. her reactions and her way of interacting. And when she when the guy, when the ghoul shoots that guy, she's like, why? Why are you doing? Why are you like this? And he's like, let me tell you something. I'm you. You just don't realize it yet because this is what the world will make you into. So he's at the end. He has lost all of his yeah. optimism. He is at the end of it. And Maximus is in the middle because Maximus has existed and seen some of the terrors of the real world, but still believes the brotherhood is a way out, is a is is a lifeboat and that, that their nobility of what they are is going to make them special. And he's realizing as they keep abusing him. No, there is no out. This is the world because does he by the way, does he get a suit? Yes, okay. and you'll see how. I love uh, I love to see those things moving. You know what? Um, you might not after a while because that's the one aspect of the show where I feel like they skimped. You can really tell that that thing is a flimsy suit when, it, especially when they move quickly. 
Yeah. The legs look terrible. They look yeah, they, well. They, they shouldn't. They shouldn't be moving too quickly. It is a big armored oh, suit. Oh like... no, no, no! They're gonna. He's gonna be running around. You'll see it. Okay. And I, I don't think these suits and the feet especially look really goofy. And that's the thing is in okay. the games you don't really see that that much well, because yeah. you don't really look at it and the animations are specific so you don't see it. But when it's a person, because I think they do have a suit that somebody's wearing a lot of the time. And the problem is you can't make foam look like metal. No, you got to move. This is this is the whole RoboCop thing with uh, yes. Peter Weller. You got to make it. You have to move it like it's metal. Yeah, I mean, you would have to. Yeah. Or what you have to do is spend a bunch of money on like aluminum or something lightweight, which is costly. Yeah. So that's the only but, I mean, yeah, aspect of the mo- of the show that I think does not. And when hold they up have, well. and when they have the suits hanging on those racks, and I was then they like, look spectacular. Holy they look great shit! When they're, I was like when they're man. still. Or when it's just like the head moving, it looks great. Yeah. When the legs move, when they, the when they're breaks quick. When they're interviewing Maximus in the first episode, and that one suit is oh, like is walking D-80, behind him, is working back and forth. I'm like, oh my god! I was like, but that's vicious. That scene is great too because <laughs> I don't know whether Maximus did it or not. I really don't. Do they never? I, do they never say? They haven't yet, and I'm six episodes in. Man, I because and then I, he meets up with the girl. Did you see where he talks to the girl later? And she's like, "I told him it wasn't you," but then she kind of looks at him. Yeah, yeah, like she's trying to get him to. Yeah, like as, she's he, trying to figure it out too that she doesn't really yeah. know, but she's not going to turn. I, him I no want what. to think. I want to think that he didn't do it, only because she is like the one friend that he has. Yes, but once you get further into his backstory and you see what he does, you might reassess it makes you question that. it. Yeah, yeah. All right, because. There, Maximus is really well done in that he is not a purely good character. He has a lot of flaws. He is willing to do terrible things and will. And there is always this 15% chance that he's untrustworthy to me. It's low. So is he, is he, a, is he a villain? No, no, no. He is a victim. But he is a okay. victim that is reacting in ways that are warped by the world he lives in. So I don't think that he necessarily, I think that interview scene is really good because he's struggling with something and it's yeah. Oh, like, yeah. he doesn't want as necessary. And I think it's, it's one of two things. This is how I read this scene is one of two things. One is that his, cause it comes off very guilty. Yes. Oh and yeah. Th- it may be because he actually did it. And or because is, he really wanted to do it or he's relieved well, that it happened to her. Well, well, I think it's either that he did it and he's struggling with whether admitting that is good or bad, because, again, the brotherhood is fucked up. Yeah. Or he didn't, but he doesn't want to just straight deny it because that could be seen as weak. That actually ambition, because the guy says you're ambitious, aren't you? So the brotherhood might actually reward cutthroat tactics. So it it's might. hard to say what, yeah. because of the way the Brotherhood is shown as the series goes on, I'm not convinced that if he had said, yes, I did it, they would not have immediately given him a suit. They might have. The fact that he is so slavishly devoted to them is what gets him well, he's, the, he's a, the squire he's a, position. Yeah, he's, I, mean, I, I haven't seen enough of the show, but he feels closer to a, a uh, what do you call it? He feels closer to a born again than, he, than not. Oh, definitely. No, no, definitely. Yeah. And you'll and you'll find out why it's it's well, I mean, I'll tell you, you don't care, but it's because he's from Shady Sands, which was nuked. And ironically, he hid in a fridge. And it I saw that. I did see that. Yeah. yeah, there's that sequence where he comes out of the fridge. Yeah. And they're going to show you more of that. Yeah. But they didn't tell they don't tell you at first <laughs> that that's from a place that was nuked and he was right there. And the first thing he sees is the brotherhood that comes in to rescue them. And so, you know, because when they find that big. When they find Shady Sands, he and Lucy are there, and she says, you know, what happened? And he takes her, he's like, come look at this. And he takes her over, and there's a giant crater. And he says, what happened? And he said, no, same thing that always happens. Everybody wants to save the world. They just disagree as to how to do it, which is a really specific line when you're looking at a nuclear crater. Yeah. There's lots of that little nice, and there's No, huge, the writing, no, no. The, the well, writing is fantastic. When they're flashing back to the ghoul's life, his yeah. pre-war life, they get into communism and capitalism. And, yeah, and man, he was, he was there a, some, whoo, there's some sharp yeah. stuff in there. Yeah, I, I honestly, uh, at this point, Lisa Joy and, and and Jonathan Nolan can do any show, and I'll go see it. 
Like I'm having second shot. thoughts now about their whole because they did the uh, the periphery show. I'm having second thoughts about going back and watching that. Like you mean the peripheral, the, the peripheral, the peripheral. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because yeah, I, I, if they yeah. canceled it, I might at some point I, go back. But what's the point? Uh, well, you can still enjoy it for the ride. Yeah, but it's a it's a cliffhanger. What do you I know, think? listen, you don't always need the orgasm. Sometimes it's nice just to get in there for a while. No. Well, no. I guess not, for <laughs> not, not, not when it comes to TV for me. I guess not. No, no, no. If I if I'm getting on the horse, it better go through the the entire. Man, no. Not, I, well, and that, I get yes, and I guess that's where where we differ because yeah, I, I don't, don't mind. I don't, I don't mind shit. having. No, I'm okay. <laughs> There, there ain't there ain't enough time on the world for me to go through that. I'd rather have the whole the whole thing. I don't mind spending time in a world, especially since I know where, what happens. I read the fucking books. Y- okay, I'll give you that, but <laughs> in that case, I'll go read the books. Oh, you should. I think you'd love them. Well, that's what I'm saying. As I I, well, yeah. I, did, I read the first one. I, I would oh, go the, back and read the books again. Yeah. The book. I guess you're right. Yeah. So. I don't. I agree. I like spending time in the world, but I then if okay, especially with something like Gibson or who you know with, with those type yeah. of people where it's it's that kind of world. Yeah, I think I think with this is I, I just need to separate it from Gibson and look at it as a as a Nolan Joy show. Oh, and you, I think you mean I, like uh, Altered Carbon. Yeah. yeah, but they didn't do that. Uh, it's not theirs. Who did Who did Altered Carbon? No, no, no. What I'm saying is. It's not no, I can't. so easy to no, find I can't. a book from the I, I can't because Ultra Carbon is And like, that for me, even though too, I'm not as much of a Gibson fan too, as you are, dude. yeah, I, I enjoy his writing to an extent I don't, where if I'm not going to get think all I, it, I don't want it. I don't think I could watch a Neuromancer show at this point. <laughs> I just you know, don't think I'll ever trust it. Well, I mean, if they did it, I would watch it. I'd be curious. The, the, the interesting part of this is... Yeah. I know they've. I believe they've already greenlit a season two of Fallout, which makes sense because it's been received. They basically everybody's like, "Well, well outside yes, of Last of other, Us, this is the best thing that, that's been done with video games." But there's which, no story. Yeah. They can create their own story through the Fallout universe. Yes, that's what yeah. works. Well, they yeah. can, but they can't completely go out into outer space. They still have to have it. You know, there's still you know have what to be they and Vault Tech and they Vault can go into outer space. There's fucking aliens in the game. Yeah, well, okay, don't say that to the hardcore fans because you're gonna have a fight because <laughs> there weren't supposed to be, and that's that's uh, another thing that people hate Bethesda for is that they took what were not aliens and made them into aliens. The uh, what 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 was the alien blaster before then? Okay, it was an experimental weapon from creatures okay. that had been... So the aliens in the old Fallout games were revealed to not actually be aliens. They were experiments. They were Yes, they were engineered. Everybody Ooh. just called them aliens, and they made a blaster that they called... But the old alien blaster yeah. ran on like just microfusion cells. It was a normal weapon. It just was high-powered. Got and it. then when Bethesda came along, it became, oh, alien power cells for an alien gun, because there's aliens. And it's like, oh, okay. I don't care as much, but man, people get wound up about that shit. I'm just saying. You know what? It's a game, guys. Entertain yourselves. Well, and and to be fair to the critics, the Mothership Zeta thing was stupid. It was not the best DLC they ever made. So I kind of get why they, why some people are like, if you're gonna do that, then at least yeah, do but it well, Nolan, and, but Nolan and Joy can now cherry pick what they want from all of it. Sure. Yeah. So. Yeah. So yes, yes, you're correct. Could they literally go into outer space? Of course they could. But yes. I'm saying that but you still writing, have to have some of what Fallout good. is in there. Yeah. And you know what? I think I, you know what I'd love understood it properly, which is the what I'd love a second season of. Yeah. I'd actually really love to get a second season of that Cowboy Bebop show. That shit was just getting interesting. You mean the the animes, the original one? No, the no the the actual sh- the live action show. Oh. Yeah, I yeah. I thought it was just getting interesting right at the end when they actually did something original. Uh, yeah, no. and then they ended it. Nope. Again, I, I was actually I enjoyed that. I thought it was fun. It wasn't perfect, but it was fun. I didn't watch it enough because they canceled it. So what do I care? I know, I know. You have a hang up with this stuff. No tantric yeah. for you. I got it. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah. or it has to be. Well, okay. <laughs> I should I should put an asterisk after that because 
If you're going to leave it unresolved, it better feel like you planned it. If it's a if it's a complete season with a story that comes to a conclusion. I don't even need a conclusion, but I have to feel like you meant it. Like David Lynch doesn't complete his stories, but you know that that's intentional. Yes, he ended it. Yes, right. If it just abruptly stops and there was a big setup, and there's and you you. It's like that uh, the archive. Uh, what did I say? Archive. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Eighty one, yeah. whatever it was. Yeah. Where I said if they had just stopped it here, we're good. It's done. I don't need to know anything past that. But no, you had to set up a bait hook for the next thing that never materialized. That's my problem. So it's not that I need a story if to you're, resolve. You know what? If your show needs a bait, it's a the show wasn't good enough. Correct. Because if it's good enough, you don't need a bait hook. The show is the bait hook. Yes. So. Yeah. So what have you what have you got tonight for me, sir? Did your microphone just change? I just this I type? I turned it a little bit. Yeah, because your quality got on my end got weird, but it could just be. Scary. Is it is it okay? Oh, I can hear it as uh, long okay. as you're recording. I don't care. I'm just making sure nothing. No, I I room, I, I sit for part of the show and I stand for part of the show now. No, it's not that. I would. I not. It's not a positional thing. The quality changed, so I was just making sure because I know in the past you know sometimes what? your stuff has shifted on. Let you. me. Uh, let me just look at my just, sound quality I mean, really quick to actually, make sure I should, that I should look at mine too. <laughs> are, we, are, we, are we even on the right mics? Uh, I am, and oh, it did. The recording's fine. Son of hey! a bitch! It shifted on me sometimes. What a what See? a bitch! Hold on. I don't know what the yeah, fuck it you, did. You, you went you went gr- 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 for a minute, and then when it went, you know, which is fine on your side, and I don't care. Hold on. Let's see if we can get it back. Okay. Come on, man. Wake up. Hey, there you go. Can you hear me? Can you can you hear me now? I can hear. Oh, you're good. Then we're back. It, Everything's set. Yeah, it popped on. Okay. There you go. You can you can hear how sometimes our sound quality decides to okay. murder itself. Well, I, I they would hear. I I was curious. I you know, I, if it was Skype. They wouldn't hear. Yeah, it. I don't know why they did that. That's know. weird. Yeah, because like I was, uh, that's why it I just, said uh, to, just to check. Because if your stuff to, had been fine, it would. Yeah, been all I did was fine. literally tilt the microphone like an inch. Uh oh. Because well, don't tilt nothing. Because I shifted. I went don't, to a standing position. Nothing. I know. No, 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 no. So don't do that. yes. So what have you got for me for tonight, Mister Wizard? Really oh, uh, so I never really got to talk about. I don't know that we even really talked about the three body problem series. It's no, series. no, we haven't. No. Okay. No, we didn't. I, I mentioned is, it on a couple of the is, other shows, but they were not individuals who were open to spoilers, so I couldn't really okay. delve into it. Yeah, I, I want to so read I those. Did not do... I want to read those books because I'm really fascinated by them because it, it is uh, – I'm always fascinated by science fiction that originates from someplace other than the United States because it's, okay. it's culturally so, uh, it shows – I'll give you a warning. Yeah. I'll give you a warning. Now, do you know that – you know that that was a basically machine-translated book, right? Yes, yeah. So when you read it, it's very clear it's a machine generated book. Okay. It does not read. So they didn't. They didn't. Well. They didn't get a skillful I, person to translate it. Th- well, the version that's widely available, which I read the first couple chapters of, feels like a machine translated the book, as opposed to somebody sitting with a native person and having them check what was you know going through. Am I getting this right? Does this does this feel right? It does well, not feel okay. Right. It so feels then, like somebody fed it into a how Google does Translate. the show feel? The show is stellar. The show is if I hadn't watched Fallout, I would say it's the best thing I've watched this year. But now I've watched Fallout. So <laughs> Fallout is better because I'm closer to Fallout. Yeah. But as a series, I was stunned. Oh, I already used that word for Fallout. So let me say I was you can, hey, very, listen, you can be very stunned by more surprised. than one thing. Well, what I did was, because I've said this before, and I, and I should have mentioned for Fallout, you know how there's the ads in Prime Video? Yeah. Did you pay to turn those off or no? Oh, you can turn those off? I'm going to turn them off. Yeah. Because they're a bunch of okay, fucking well, assholes. I, I turned them off for this month, and I'm going to turn them back on when I stop using Prime Video all the time. So I'm fine with that. But I started I watched started to watch Fallout with them, and I went, nah, I'll pay the three bucks. It's worth it. And I paid the $3, and I set a reminder on my phone to turn them back off. So don't, don't forget, everybody, you can turn those on and off. You do not have to pay every month to have yeah. those off. Now we use so we if you're use not using it all the time, enough, yeah. well, then, yeah, it didn't pop up and say go ad free. It popped up like four times No, for me. I've never seen it. Yeah, there's a setting where you yeah. say go ad free, and it'll say do you want to – you have to authorize it, and that's 3 bucks a month. So you can turn those off. Um, so 
I canceled Netflix, but I went, this is getting good reviews. It looks good. I like some of the people in it. I will go ahead and subscribe for a month and set a reminder to cancel again. Now, I didn't do it at the Ultra HDR, so I'm sure it's even better looking, but even at the lower whatever that I watched that at, at, it was spectacular. They clearly put a lot of money into it. Everybody in it is excellent. And the, from what I understand, I didn't clip it because so much of it is in foreign languages Yeah, that it, it, there wasn't even really a point, but it's got a fascinating kind of central moral question to it. Now, do you know the story at all? Or I no? can't remember at this point. I used to. Okay. So the story starts out and the character who is played by Ma, uh, Keiko O'Brien from DS9. Yes, yes. She is playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you know yeah. she was at West Wing? So, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. She pops yeah, she up is. in one episode. Yeah. I saw her and I. Yeah, just one. And I, this, and I turned oh, to my wife a... and I was like, that's O'Brien's wife. Okay. All right. Let, let's just go through this. The doctor from Voyager shows up in one episode. Uh, Keiko O'Brien shows up for one episode. Are we talking about West Wing? Uh, West okay. Wing, yeah. Um, there's a bunch of people. There's a bunch of Star Trek people who pop up for one episode. Who else? I'm, uh, well, there's a bunch. But you're going to see a lot of... I can't remember them all, but you are going to see a bunch of people from numerous shows that you know that are going to pop up for one episode. One episode. And then that's it. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, you you that that definitely is uh you're you're going to see a lot of West Wing. That's very common. So anyway, she's playing the uh her name is Ye Wenjie. I'm going to mispronounce it cuz it's a Chinese name. But essentially, she's playing it's the same character as the book, but they changed the names for some reason. I'm sure there's a there's a explanation for it, but they changed some of the names. And I don't even think it's an amalgamation thing. I think they just changed some of the names. So anyway, Rosalind Chow plays the adult version, the current version of this character that we see in a flashback, and it's the Cultural Revolution, and she is an astrophysicist, and her father is a scientist, and in the Cultural Revolution, apparently, I don't know a lot about it, I'll just be honest, I don't study it, I don't care, but apparently, if this, I guess, is accurate, they were very harsh on scientists, and so right. she sees her father. I, I just recently yep. did, oh my god, this is weird timing. You know how I'm doing that course yeah. that's all that's uh was it comprehending like the 20th century? The woman yeah. doing the course, one of the things she's doing is she's showing you how all these countries came to be, um, how, basically how their governments came to be what they were in the 20th century, right? Uh, and okay. she gets into like you know how uh, you know the, the in Russia the Bolshevik Revolution, then what what happened when Stalin arrived and all this shit, and then but recently I did China. And I did, and she did, within like I think she does it in about an hour and a half. She does a whole explanation of how, yeah, how uh, uh, China went from basically, um, essentially the Cultural Revolution, how it became a communist country. And I gotta tell you, there's shit I didn't know about this that it ma it makes a lot of sense why uh, Mao was able to take hold because after so I didn't know this, but so pre World War One, um, the British essentially went in – the British were selling opium to China, and China essentially turned around and said, you know, no, we don't want you selling opium. And they uh, they, I don't remember, they they locked up uh, a bunch of the uh, um, East India people in a, in a warehouse to kind of get them to come out to arrest them. And they refused to come out, and people died. And the British army essentially came in and, and essentially bitch slapped China. I mean, this is – remember, this is – China, like, you know, in the 18th century, they bitch slapped and were basically like, yeah, you know what? You're not going to touch the East India Company and we're going to pump in as much fucking opium as we feel like it. Right. And like at this, at this point, I think it, the emperor even wrote a letter to the, to the queen to try to convince her that, you know, you won't even let you. You don't want people doing opium in your country. Why is your country just basically making a living out of pumping it into mine? Uh, but then all these other countries came into China and essentially started creating these like uh, these divisions where like there were parts of China that were under other people's governments. So like there were parts of China, like Hong Kong was was under British government. There were parts of China that was or, or under German government. And it got so bad that the U.S. got scared that these were going to become um, full on colonies. 
that essentially China was going to get ripped apart and turned into colonies of these bigger countries. So China, so U.S. came in and said, you know what, we need to make a deal here that China will remain a country and that these, you know, you can have these exclusion zones where your government has got control, but you can't take China apart. Um, and like, just, just gives you an idea of how fucked up things were so that when, uh, after World War One, the, I guess when they were, when they were doing the deals after World War One, uh, the allies realized that they needed to make an ally out of Japan. So they took the exclusion zones that essentially Germany owned and gave them to Japan, who was a direct adversary of China. You can imagine how much this pissed them off, right? But at this point, they still didn't have the the power to kind of break away from all these different countries, you know, involved. And, you know, you've got essentially this is where Mao comes into it, where they're it's they don't they don't they don't want their own government because their own government's too weak. They're trying to push out all these other governments that have made their country weak. Um, and, uh, you know, in a situation like that, it's very easy for something like communism to come in and say, fuck these people. You know, um, it's really interesting, like the breakdown of how these things culturally can happen. Uh, but yes, then when once the communist revolution got rolling, they didn't fucking trust anybody, anybody who was intelligent, anyone who was essentially bourgeoisie, like they got rid of a lot of people. Well, so that's how this starts off. So she's a young woman scientist and her father is dragged in front of the. I don't know, the cultural assessment committee or whatever yeah. they're called. And they're basically saying, you know, are, they, are, are you with us? I, renounce, yeah. renounce science or, you know, you know, whatever. Do you, do you admit that science isn't what you said it was or I, something to do with the, I don't even remember what the, what the scientific theory was, whatever it was. And he's basically like, no. So they beat him to death in front of her. And so she is sent to, a prison they discover that she's the they come up she comes up to the body and then the young chinese officer who beat the father to death is like uh are, are, are you a scientist too or something like that and she's like yeah and you're a scumbag for being my father and she's like oh got it put her in prison so they send her off to you know be in a labor camp and in a labor camp you know it's misery of course and she befriends this young guy and he gives her a copy of Silent Spring, which is, if anybody doesn't know, it's a book about, it's basically an environmentalist book, uh, inventor, environmental science fiction book. Very famous, if you don't know. Uh, worth reading. And it's found, and she will not turn the guy in, so they, she thinks she's going to be executed or whatever, but they realize that she's really smart, and they're like, all right, we're going to transfer you to this secret project that we've got going on. And... Uh, they say, they basically tell her because of your association, your father and blah, 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 you're never going to leave this camp, period. You will spend your entire life here. So you can spend it down there doing labor or you can spend it here at this secret project doing science. What would you like? And she's like, I'll do the science. So it's this giant radio telescope dish, contact style. And she very quickly figures out that they're not because the way they're talking about it is like they're sending messages to secret agents or something, but she realizes that doesn't make any sense that they're in fact sending messages into space. And so she's like, Oh, well, that's really interesting. Okay. Yeah. I want to work on this. So it's cutting between that and the modern day. I'm not going to jump back and forth. So I'm going to just tell you both parts of it and then I'll intersect them into the present. So eventually she realizes because what they're having a problem with is they can't get the signal to go far enough out. Their concern is, well, our signal's only going a very small amount of distance, and we're pretty sure there's nobody nearby. It's the the Fermi paradox or yeah, whatever. Yeah, why is, it, why is so space says, empty? Yeah. Exactly. And they think it's because they can't project it far enough. I think, they think that's part of the problem. They, they, I think they say that they have – they talk about the wow signal and that they can't reach where they think that came from, and if they could boost the signal enough, they could target it to that. And so as she's looking at it, she figures out – that there is a way to essentially, I don't know if this is the exact explanation, but it sounded to me the way they explained it, you know, because there's some heavy science in here and I'm not the smartest person in science, 
but it sounded almost like the whole slingshot thing from Star Trek Four, where if you can hit the signal with the sun, it'll like ramp it up and fire superpower. Yeah. And so she's like, oh, okay, we can use the sun to amplify the signal. Yeah, this, it, the but, slingshot, the Star Trek slingshot maneuver, it won't send you back in time, but it will speed you the fuck up. Yeah, yeah. and there's something, and I meant to look this up. There's something with apparently Chinese political symbolism in the sun, which I don't really know, because when it's suggested, she, the, the government's immediately like, it's, I think the sun is the emperor or something. I don't, I didn't really follow it. Or the sun is somebody. And so the, the person in charge of the product is like, absolutely not. We cannot use the sun. Do you understand what, if we even suggest such a thing, that the political ramifications, blah, 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 blah. And so they shoot it down. And so all along, and the guy who she was working with stole her idea. You know, all these things have happened. And she's constantly being just degraded and debased and betrayed. And all this stuff happens. And so she gets to this point and she realizes that she can just send the signal. Uh, that she, you know, she secretly points the dish and she fires the signal out and she gets a response. And the response says, which is really interesting. The response says, yeah, I'm somebody like you who's watching this stuff, but you better not send another signal because everybody else on my world will come invade and kill all of you. So be glad I'm the one who saw it. Do not send another signal. <laughs> and that's what this, this person sends back, right? So she reads it, and she, she basically sits there and thinks about it, and then she par- programs another message in that says, you know what? We can't save ourselves. We're fucked. Come get us. <laughs> and she sends it, right? So then we jump to the present. Oh, man. Yeah. Right? Now, the, you I'm know what? Get listen, to listen. That... I want you to put somebody else in this position, right? If you were yeah. a Jew in World War II in a concentration camp. No, 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 no. I'm on her no, but side. You but you, on her but side. you totally get it, right? Yeah. Uh, no, I would have punched that fucking button till it broke. Are you kidding? I mean, because I'm, I'm really shortening the amount of stuff this woman went through. If I was this person... I wouldn't have thought for about it for more than 60 seconds before I sent that message because fuck these people. No, I don't. She's portrayed as the villain in this thing. No, no, I'm, I'm with oh, her is she, all is she, the way. Is she portrayed as a villain? Yes. But, well, because what she did was basically condemn the whole planet. So to everybody else, oh, who doesn't you know, know what uh, happened listen, to her. I, I thought she was the hero. Okay, hold on. <laughs> no, I, oh yeah. Well, that's that's what I'm, I'm I'm with. That's what I'm saying. So now we cut to the present, and we find out because does it, uh, hold on? Benedict Wong does anybody is, is, know what that, that she, she said? The, the, the signals? Well, not yet. That it's it, we're gonna okay. get there. So that's <laughs> that's what we're getting to. So in the in the present day. There is a rash of suicides by scientists and specifically astrophysicists and people who work in these very specific fields. And they're they're also starting to get really impossible readings from all of the particle accelerators on the planet. And this coincides with all these scientists killing themselves. And so essentially what I would call MI6, which doesn't I don't think there is a real MI6. Of course, that's a bond thing. But the uh, whatever version of that that there is, there is uh, there has to be some CIA version for the I don't know if that is MI5. They never I don't think they ever specify it's MI5. So maybe that's what it's supposed to be. But it doesn't right. feel like MI5 it. It feels like it's is, Black the United, Ops is the for United the, Kingdom's for domestic counterintelligence and security agency. Well, this feels like they're operating well, underneath. I'm that sure they more must secretly. have. Listen, there's always deeper levels of security. Yeah. yeah. So whatever. So whatever that is, there's Benedict Wong is one of them, and he's monitoring all the stuff that's going on. You see him for a long time, just watching people, and trying to figure out what's going on because we see this scientist who comes in one night and she's talking to one of the main characters as the show goes on, and then she goes and she throws herself off the off the this ramp or this 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 ramp over this giant cooling pool for the particle accelerator and kills herself inexplicably. And she is the daughter of she's, are they, are they getting getting compelled or do they know something? Well, sort of yes and no. So what we then see is one of the other side. Cause so basically the core group as this goes on, there's a core group of scientists that become the main characters. It's uh, Mike Evans, 
Oh God, what are all the names? Oh, jeez. Hold on. Okay, here we go. I've just done the cast list. This Buckaroo Banzai, so Perfect Tommy. Uh, no, no, it, it's no, it's important because not all of them make it, so I have to get the names right. So there's Saul, there's Jack, there's Vera is the one who kills herself right at the beginning, and she is the one who works with Saul, who um, is he makes it all the way to the end, at least so far. There's Benedict Wong, then there's Jin, uh, Will. Will's a great character. And then I'm, is there, oh, and then Jonathan Price shows up uh, as a, as a, uh, basically the, as the collaborator with the, what are they called? The Santee, I think are their names. I think that's the name of the, the, the aliens. But anyway, she kills herself and a lot of her students and people who know her are getting together and they're all kind of hearing about all these scientists killing themselves. And one of them, whose name is, I'll know her by the actress who plays her, Augie. Yeah, Augie has developed this nanofilament thing and suddenly she starts seeing these numbers counting down on her vision. This was in the trailer. And she thinks she's having a brain tumor or that she's having a problem, like a medical problem, and they can't find anything. But she keeps seeing these numbers, right? And then these VR headsets, one of them turns up in one of the people who killed themselves had one of these VR headsets and Benedict Wong is trying to figure out what it is. He keeps hearing about it, but they can't get one. And then one of the people of this group is sent one of these things and tries it on and is, I'm trying to remember why he sent it. There's, but he and one of the other ones is sent these headsets and they try them on. There's this very realistic VR game. I mean, essentially it isn't VR. It's like it's taking over their brains. And it's just a game where they have to try to save a civilization. And the civilization keeps changing, but there's one consistent young girl who's in every single one. And every level is not necessarily them saving the civilization, but figuring out what the twist of that level is. And so this is going on and going on and going on and they don't know why and there's no message to it. It just keeps happening and the two of them are playing it and Augie gets very concerned. The nanofiber scientist gets really concerned about the headset because she's saying reasonably, you don't know who sent this to you and you're telling us that it's way ahead of any technology that's currently out there. Why would this exist? What is this? Why would you put this on your head and let it interface yeah. with your fucking brain? Yeah. Like she's I mean, it's immediately like this is a I bad thing. I don't disagree. Thing. <laughs> yeah. No. So finally, they they beat level four, which takes them a long time to beat the fourth level, and they meet this young woman. They're they're then told, okay, come here and meet with us. So Jack and Jin which is, I don't remember what Jin's specialty is. I think she's an astrophysicist. And Jack, I don't really ever know what Jack's area of study was because he comes off as just somebody who got out of science because he cashed in. He had a neat idea for a food, like uh, snack treats, and it got big. So he was like, ah, fuck science. I just want to make money and be a nerd. And he's really, really fun. He's a great guy. He's very sarcastic. I loved him immediately, so I knew he was going to die, and of course he does. Uh, So they go to meet this woman, and this woman has appeared in some places, but every time she does, there's no surveillance footage of her. And Benedict Wong wants to know why. He knows there's something, he's like, I don't know who's scrubbing this footage, but somebody is, because she shows up when Augie is outside one night and says, oh, uh, if you want to get rid of those numbers, shut down your project. Otherwise, something bad will happen. And ben, and, she's, and Benedict Wong then shows up and says, yeah, um, why'd you shut your project down? And she's like, because you wouldn't believe me. There's these numbers. And this woman told me, and he's like, no, I believe you. Uh, come here, I'll show you. And he shows her footage of her because, of course, in yeah. Britain, there's cameras everywhere. So he's got the footage and she's like, and he's like, uh, here, watch this. And she's looking at it. She's like, yeah, there's nobody there. What does what, what this prove? And he's like, no, no, look closely. Your your cigarette lighter wasn't working that night, yet your cigarette just got lit. How could that happen if there wasn't any, somebody else there? And so he's picked up that something's oh, going on. It's, it's really kind of clever. It's not the, it's the yeah. absence of information. But there was something there, yes. Yes, exactly. Uh huh. Yes, there was something there, but it's yeah. perfectly scrubbed. It's not like there's a shadow. It's gone. And that to him is very disturbing, which it should be because he's saying nobody should be able to scrub this footage. And yet there it is. And so Jack and Jin meet with this woman and she explains that they are part of a group that this headset was made was the technology's alien and that there are aliens that are coming to Earth and they're 400 years away. 
and that she is part of a group that is ready to welcome them and help them integrate into, you know, into the world because their world is dying and their world is dying because of the quote three body problem where they're caught in a three star system. So they keep, they know that they're going to have these long periods where everything is, there's a drought and there's no food, but they can't predict it. Therefore they can't plan for it. And so they're dying. So they have to leave. And so they wanted to find a, a, a planet where they could, well, they say settle, but of course we know that what they actually mean is invade and destroy. And we find out why, and, and later there was a chance that they might want to coexist, but we fucking blew it, but we'll get to that. So, so she tells Jack and Jim this and Jack is like, yeah, bullshit. I don't believe any of this. And this was one of my only real problems, you know, cause obviously there's suspension of disbelief, but he's basically like, nope, I don't want any part of this. And he gets up and walks out. Now, of course, do you really think that a highly secretive organization that represents aliens and has been testing you is no, just going to let not. you walk out? I mean, nobody with an intelligence would just walk out this way, but he leaves. And of course he's then killed by the woman and the footage is scrubbed. Uh, Benedict Wong, of course knows it's the same person. And so that once he Benedict Wong meets out with Augie, he's like, okay, so we want Jin to go ahead and meet with this group and see what it's about and report back to us. And so she goes to this meeting and finds that the head of the group is, of course, Rosalind Chow. This is the adult version of that character who had sent the message. And that allows the police to come in and capture her. And the thing is, nobody resists it. She says, don't resist anything. Don't resist any of it. All of this is happening because our Lord, which is what she, they refer to the aliens as, our Lord wants it to happen. Meaning, because you find out that they can monitor everything. They have already integrated into every communication system, every, ma uh, every surveillance system on the planet. They, in fact, have these two little microcomputers that can expand to cover the whole planet. They can, they can encase the planet in a dome. So they are aware of everything. And everything that is happening is fine with them to happen. They are, in fact, directing everything or at least allowing everything to happen. And there are multiple points where this is demonstrated to be accurate. They, they are, in fact, in control to a very high degree. They are not in total control because they're not there. Yeah, it's, here, it's all remote. On the planet. But they, they can see everything. So Rosalind Chow comes off. She's very calm. She's not panicking no matter what. She's not threatened because she's like, no, you have no control over me. You have me in custody because they want me to be in custody, but they know I'm working for them, so I don't care. And it comes off as very... Very intimidating because, you know, she's right. They, they have control over lots of things. So we find out that there is a ship out on the ocean, uh, this huge tanker ship called Judgment Day, which is a little on the nose, but whatever. And that ship has satellite technology that allows them to communicate in relative real time with the aliens. Okay. So the person on the ship is somebody that Keiko O'Brien met back in the seventies in China. He was an American. Well, not American. He's British, a uh, British guy. Actually, is he supposed to be American? Is he doing an American accent? I'm, Cause I recognize Jonathan price, but I do think he's speaking in an American accent or trying to. So I think he is supposed to be an American, uh, but anyway, he's there. Because what was he trying to save? He was there in this little hut and ah, I'm trying to remember what he was trying to say, but he basically said, yeah, you know what? Humans, we're the problem. These, these creatures, they live in harmony. We're ruining them. And she recognizes basically a kindred spirit because she's like, oh yeah, humans, we suck. And so they kind of get together. And so she and he are basically the heads of this organization that are contacting the, the Santee. And so what, Mike Evans or Jonathan Price, what Brazil is doing is he is educating the Santee on humanity. And there's a point where he is reading them Red Riding Hood, the, yeah, the story, yeah, yeah. The, the children's story. And she, he reads it and they're like, hmm, well, why, why would the wolf not just eat the girl? And he says, well, the wolf is... He's being deceptive. And, and, and they're like, well, what, what do you mean? What is deceptive? And he says, well, it's, it's lying. It's, it's misdirecting oh, do they, do somebody. Do they not have lying? He's like, don't. 
he, and he's like, don't you lie? And, and they're like, why would you lie? Why not just be truthful, everybody? And he's like, well, I don't know. Well, you know, the, and she, and then they say something along the lines of, well, what did, what did you do with this wolf when you caught him? And he says, well, no, 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 it's, it's a story. It's, it's a, you know, it's a book. It's a, it's a fiction. It's not real. And they're like, well, that's also a lie. And they're like, okay, uh, we can't coexist with liars. And then they just stop talking. At which point you realize, uh oh, you didn't think this one all the way through because now everybody's fucked. So at right about that time, the, this giant ship has to pass through the, uh, the uh, yeah. Panama Canal. And so the government enlists Augie and says, we need your microfibers because we have to get this hard drive that will tell us how to find out where these aliens are. And so they set up essentially, you remember in the first Resident Evil movie, the lasers <laughs> yes. that cut everything into cubes? They set up a nanofiber version of this, but Augie didn't realize what this, that there were children and like civilians on board. Oh, They're God. all dead. They all, everything gets sliced. There's like, and she sees a little like child's leg with a foot oh. in the shoe, but it's like, you know, that's all that's left. And so she immediately is like, fuck all of you. And almost to the point where she's like, you know what? That woman, she was right. Cause look what we're doing. And she quits. But that, that, that scene is, they made a big deal about that. I guess because I've watched a lot of stuff, you know it wasn't why, that big you know, deal to me, but I kind of get why you know I was the big kid's deal foot. You? Yeah, because maybe. Just recently, you killed goblin children in uh, in uh, fucking well, Baldur's Gate that's again. True. And you walked in and you were like, those kids are yes. bastards. And you were like, yeah, we have to take them out before they kill us. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then before that, too, there was something about... Right before they stopped talking to, to Brazil, he said something about bugs and pests and that type of thing. So now what they basically have said is, okay, you're liars. We can't live with you. You are bugs and we're going to exterminate you. And so they take over every screen on the planet and they just display the words, you are bugs. And then they have the, one of their supercomputers basically envelop the entire world to show the world that you're dead. As soon as we get there, we'll be there in 400 years. Right? So everybody flips out, of course. And this, very similar to Watchmen kind of unifies the planet as far as, okay, what are we going to do? And what they figure out is that, and there is, I guess, some logic to this. It makes sense to me. I assume there's some scientific basis for this because it does kind of logic to me, make sense of it. Is they say, okay, they're advanced now, but they're 400 years away. By the time they get here, we will be advanced enough to be able to withstand them because I don't know. They yeah, yeah. Some essentially. Kind of yeah. Essentially. But the and problem is, yeah, the problem is, are they, because they're oh, stuck. They can't advance oh, in that 400 yeah, years. That, they're just, that's, that's the only part that makes this work. See? Yeah. Because if they were still advancing as they were going, then, then the, the, the chasm would remain the same between their technologies. But because these people are kind of stuck where they are, by the time they get to, you will be 400 years more advanced, which means that you may be able to clobber them by the time they get there. Right, especially because they were leaving their planet because it was not able to sustain them, so they wouldn't be able to keep yeah, going. Yeah. Like, they'd reach the end. So that's the idea. So the guy who's head of MI75 or whatever <laughs> says, if we yeah. can figure out, if we can just hide what we're doing or figure something out that they can't anticipate, then we can beat them. The problem being they're monitoring everything. So how do we you gotta figure out a You've got to create a network a that they're not part of. To be able... Ah, sort of. So, uh, so they figure out this thing where they're going to what? What they they get this idea of, or Jin gets this idea of, or sorry, the MI seventy five guy says, "Is there any way that we could send somebody, cryogenically freeze them, and fire them over to them to act as a spy?" Because the one thing that they can't do is read minds. We have no evidence and they have shown nothing and there's nothing in the hard drive we recovered that indicates that they have any ability to read our minds. So, so they the don't know, so they can't deal that with is you impenetrable. Lying. Yeah. Right. But they, so they don't really know whether you're lying or not. So if somebody can volunteer, because obviously they could just torture this person infinitely, that is a possibility, but 
if this person can learn something about them and communicate any type of advantage back, or if they could somehow fool them or integrate or whatever, it's worth trying. So they figure out how to cryogenically freeze somebody and they figure out how to send that person because you have to accelerate them to enough speed to reach them before obviously they get too close. And so they're going to set up a series of nuclear weapons in space that will blow up and propel a solar a radiation oh, yes. sail, they call it. And the problem is they realize that they can't launch an entire person. It's too, they're too heavy. And it just so happens that one of, the science, one of the group of scientists has been diagnosed with terminal cancer. And so he volunteers to have his brain extracted, or basically his head extracted, and frozen and sent to them. <laughs> and, and the idea is, well, they can probably rebuild him or at least talk to him so we don't have to send the whole body. And they try it, but it doesn't work. The bombs don't work well enough. So he's being propelled into space, but he's not going to reach them yeah, for yeah. however long. But his brain's frozen, so I assume he's going to show up in a later season. I mean, I can't imagine they'll set that up for some reason. So that doesn't quite work, but his brain is going somewhere. And so then in the present, after that happens, they come up with this alternate idea, which is called the Wallfacer Project. And this idea is that they're going to select three individuals that they will let do anything they want. They have total autonomy and they can come up with any ideas that they want to. And what they're hoping is that they will, because of their unique mindsets and intelligence, that they will be able to think of something and not tell anybody until they have it completely kind of formed. And then, but that, but they can't talk to anybody about it because if they can keep it in their minds, so they ha- so then they have the, to the project won't know about all it. themselves. Essentially, they just they just can't. They have to keep it within their brain somehow. Which I'm, I'm not really clear on how that works because if you can't write anything down, I, I guess you're expected to just remember every detail but That's not communicate okay. it. It's not really clear to me on what the the mechanism of this will be but one of the scientists saw who worked with the woman who killed herself in the beginning there is an attempt on his life and they figure out that it was the santee who wanted him dead and it just so happened that when they first tried to kill him a person bumped into him with a bike and made him move and so there was a whole series of things that led to a car not killing him but killing the woman that he just had a one night stand with who he was walking to an Uber with. And they determined Benedict Wong is then assigned to him as his, essentially his bodyguard. And so they, and he's like, why am I one of this team? I don't want to be part of it. I don't care. He's basically, his whole attitude is I'm not going to be alive in 400 years. I don't have kids. I don't give a fuck. Whatever happens, I don't care. All I care about is I'm alive now. And so they're like, why would you select me? I don't care about humanity. And Benedict Wong says, the fact that they tried to kill you means they think you can do something. And for that reason, we need you on this thing. And he's like, so either they're going to kill you or you're going to be a wall facer. And what's really interesting about the way that they play him is he says, well, I don't care. I reject this offer. I'm not going to be part of it. And everybody's like, anything you say, sir. He's like, no, 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 you don't understand. I'm telling you, I'm not going to be part of it. And they're like, we understand. But it's very clear that he is part of it and they're just following what he's saying, but they're still letting him be a wall facer. Like they're going to make him basically have to do it because they're just going to keep acting <laughs> like he is in it. So even if he says he quits, what they're figuring is for some reason, the aliens believe that he is going to come up with something. And so for that reason, whether he wants to be part of it or not, they have to make him part of it. And so right when the sale and right here is where the sale actually malfunctions, there's a whole lead up to it. And so when the sale malfunctions, Jin and Saul get together and they're basically depressed and they're like, what's the point? You know, they, they can see everything. They can anticipate everything. We can't beat them. And Benedict Wong shows up and he's like, all right, let's take a walk. And he takes them on this drive or he says, let's take a ride, whatever he says. And he takes them out to some marsh somewhere. And he says, you know, 
everybody looks at that message that says we are bugs and they think that means that we're going to get stomped on. He's like, but if you actually look at bugs and then he kind of points and you see out there's all these locusts that are like swarming in the sky. He's like, human beings have attempted to warp, wipe out locusts for ever, ever, I don't know ever. how many years it's been yeah. forever. And no matter what we've done, everything we've tried, every new idea we've come up with, they're still here. And they're not just still here, but they are here in force. He's like, so when they say that we're bugs, I don't take that as something negative. I take it as a positive because if those bugs can survive, so can we. And that's basically how the series ends. And you don't get anything past that. And that, to your earlier point about, well, can you have a series that ends without an ending? The series, if it never gets another thing, perfect ending. I'm fine with that. I don't need to know how it resolves. That's not really what the point of this series was. It was the idea of the resilience and the resistance, and these people yeah. kind of learning. Yes. So there are going to be more. I think they've already greenlit a second season. I think they're going to do, they may only have to do two because my understanding is this incorporates the whole first book and some of the second one. So they may be able to do this all in two books. Two seasons, yeah. Or sorry, in two series. They might do three. Uh, but in any event, and I've read what the whole story is, so I could see a way that they could do all of it because it jumps way, way ahead in time. Like there's big time jumps in this thing. So the second season is going to be something like 100 years later or whatever, uh, way farther. So this is probably the end of all these characters, at least this version of them, uh, I would think. But I thought it was really good. I, I, you know, the, the, there was a lot of interesting, what, what it feels like a very good hard science series. Cause there's a lot of stuff that in my superficial reading appears to be scientifically sound. The logic all seems to check out outside of, like I said, a couple of decisions that you can chalk up to, I guess, arrogance or just human infallibility the effects are really good it, it feels like a, a very well-made series with a lot of good like everybody in it is really good the the will character i really like what they do with him the one who's dying uh because he and the guy who's murdered early on were really good friends and that guy left him all of his money and he's in love with the woman who works for mi-75 and, but realizes that, you know, it's not going to work. And there's this whole thing with them that's really sweet and interesting. And I like all the characters are really well done and they all feel different. They all make sense to have been friends like they're connected by their science, but they also get along. They have their little, you know, push and pulls here and there. They have major disagreements here and there. But all the human relationships really feel really organic and, and well done. Uh, the science stuff is neat. You know, the the way they're trying to figure out how to beat these characters. Like, I like the idea that the, well, the one thing they can't do is read our minds. So the wall facer thing is an interesting idea, even if I don't really understand how it's supposed to work, because at some point you're going to have to tell somebody besides yourself. I mean, what are you going to do? Well, this is, I guess you could well, learn sign language, but, but they would understand like, that. Uh, like Fahrenheit. They're going to have to come up. They're going to have to come up with a direct mind interface. That's what's going to happen in the future. They will have a way to link minds directly. It's, it's the only way it would work. I was thinking like Fahrenheit 50, 451, yeah. how people become the books that they want to burn. You know? Yeah. But, so, but like I, mean, I said, you, you have to be have able to... You find a way for two people to communicate. Yes. That was that was new. Yeah. Right. So I'm trying to see if they... I don't remember what this part, if they explain how they do it. Are, are, you, are, you, are you looking no, ahead? No, it doesn't... I'm looking on the three body wiki just to see what the wall facer thing. Yeah. It doesn't say how they ever were supposed to communicate. Yeah. Apparently they were, they, they could probably just, I, okay. Appa- okay. I sort of get this. It's saying they could just do anything they wanted, meaning they could walk into a building, commandeer a defense system and start firing lasers into, I don't know, jelly beans because they thought it would somehow kill them. And nobody could, even if they burned everybody up in the building while they're doing it, like, nope, no problem. Yep, destroy that Jelly Belly factory. We're fine with it. It's okay. So I guess they could just uh, yeah, do shit. Because, they could just yeah, walk because, into a room and because take a shit on a console yeah, and say they, it's going to be They can done. monitor you, but they can't predict what you're going to do. Yeah. Right. And But neither can anybody here, so they, they don't have to defend any of their actions, which I mean, you could go around and blow up nurseries and say, well, it'll bait them. And uh, I guess they have to make sure that you're not going to go crazy. But outside of that, well, they can just kill, like they can can just kill you, you want. And, and elect somebody else. 
Uh, well, I, I said, well, but but if it was the Saul guy who apparently was critical, I guess you couldn't kill him because otherwise that yeah. rationale falls apart, which was that why are they why are the aliens trying to kill your, you? There's something in your particular you know I mean? personality that scares them. Yeah. That's it. That's what they're afraid of. Oh, no, it sounds so, like a lot of fun. Yeah. I thought it was great. Uh, like I said, it was it was worth subscribing I'll to Netflix to, again I'll for. I'll have to add it to the then, list you know, of things to check out. Yeah. And I do think it was already greenlit for a season two. Uh, but like I said, honestly, that ending is, I'm sure a lot of people would not no, be that's satisfied. It. I mean, no, but it is an ending. Sure it's it's the whole idea of, hey, it doesn't matter. Look at these bugs. We are bugs. We can do it. Yeah. Right. But for some people, that would not be a satisfying ending. I, yeah. I'm fine with it. I think it's perfectly fine. Um, no, you know what? It's an interesting there's way to some, end There's some really because, great science you know, fiction out there right now. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I really would. I hope at some point they have somebody do a a better translation. Oh, the of book. It because you know like what? Said, now the show across, is out. That's probably yeah, the book. A better translation. I, I, I would think. Yeah, that's what I would assume, because it, it just it just kind of it feels very dead. I don't know how else to put it. It is almost like, like you're reading a report. Not like an. Not like an AI was yeah. asked to generate it, but close. Where some of it just doesn't feel like a human being wrote it, and that's because it's being translated. And of course, there's always problems with that. So I have no doubt that it is literally accurate, but I don't know that it is enjoyable. <laughs> yes, poetically accurate. It does not capture the spirit of the writer very well, because oh, of course it's a machine you know that what? is taking the just to seg off really one quick because we're cl- kind of near the end here. So you know the guy who who actually wrote yes. the book for um oh god that's the movie that you that you reviewed about the writer writing the the black book oh stranger than, was it not stranger than fiction what was book. it the uh, yeah he's re- American fiction yeah. oh American fiction yeah. oh when you said black no, book no, no, I literally yeah. pictured so, so a black that, book the guy who wrote the, the book the movie's based Sorry. off he's apparently written a lot of shit he's yes, got yes, a yes. new book coming out no, where really. he rewrites Huckleberry Finn. From the point of view of the slave Jim, oh, and you know I have I read some heard that, excerpts yeah. from it. Oh man, that's funny. At yeah. one point in there, you find out that Jim Fun is stuff. actually well educated, and that he puts on a show essentially so that he doesn't get kind of like hated and beaten by the white man. And at one point, he put they they sure. show in the oh, book he's got a scene where he's teaching little slave children how to act dumb. And sound dumb oh my so that the white man doesn't realize that they kind of have, you know, kind of know what's, go- what's going on. That makes right? sense. Yeah. yeah, but reading about that, that guy, the, the actual author, he's written a ton of books. Like, he seems like an interesting character. I'm actually quite curious now to actually read some of his fiction. So, but yes. Sure, that's, yeah. Well, I mean, based, yeah. on, based on the movie, yeah. I, I agree. So, um, I just figured I'd bring mm-hmm. that up right at the end here. So, it's, you know. We're talking about book adaptions. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, I, I, I hope that they do do a better translation because I've read really, I mean, the reviews of that book are very good, but a lot of them do point out that if you can't read Chinese natively, you're getting a bit of yeah. an inferior experience. It is like text to speech translation. Yeah, they'll have to do a new translation at some point soon. I would think so. And it's that makes got, sense. It's got, I mean, it's I'm got not money surprised by it, that. People because, want to read it. You know, yeah. That's the thing. Now that it's that it has some popular, you know, attraction. I'm trying to see if they've confirmed season two. I think they have. I thought I, I, thought I saw that both Fallout and this have been confirmed for a season two already. Because this did review also when it came out very well. So I, And I think it was in the top ten of... Netflix stuff, which is what they really care about. Uh, let's see. There's good news. Blah, 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 blah. Season two. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it's been in the number one spot for a while now. Uh, number one show in over 20 countries. So that's a good sign. And 1.6 million billion minutes viewed in the first week. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, like I said, if it doesn't, yeah, well, you probably have to adapt the entire thing. I think they can do the entire thing in season two. They adapted more than the yeah, first so. book in this. So 
I don't. I don't have any doubt. They we'll could see. We'll do see it. how much. We'll see how much uh, they want to drag it episodes? out. Yeah, but if not, like I said, and I, you agree with the same thing. The ending is fine. This is this is what I mean about this ending. Feels like it is meant to be a place where you can just stop, and it's fine. There's obviously more story that can be told, and yeah. is because the book is there. But if it's not. It still ends in a way where it has a resolution of an uh, the resolution of, of the idea. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it positions it where you can imagine that okay, they won or nope, they lost, which you know goes back to whether you agree with the one or not. So there you go. But like I said, that that's that's one of the things is that is she's she is seen as this monster, and I'm like no 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 I get it no a person in that I situation yeah I can see that. Yeah, because the you know what? family uh, is destroyed yeah, in because prison. Because in the what death of do? some of these things, right? You wouldn't know, you know, because what was it? The uh, think of it this way, right? Um, the British were in India, I think, for two hundred years, right? So for two hundred years, yeah. there were Indian people who all they knew was British control, like it would never end, right? Right. You know, Native Americans yeah. watching the end of their civilization as as uh, America slowly spread across the country and wiped them out. Right. It feels completely impossible. And in that moment, in your fury, yeah, you probably look at that and go, yeah, you know what? Fuck them all. So I get it. Yeah. I get the character. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the the minute. Without, because I didn't, I didn't read, because obviously I only read like the first chapter or so, and it, th- that isn't revealed there. But there was a point very early on where I went, okay, I know what's happening here, and yeah. I understand why she's doing it. Because as soon as she knew how to amplify, I'm like, okay, there, she's basically gonna say, come wipe the. I thought she was initially at first. I was like, she's gonna say, come, come kill everybody but me because, or you know, come kill all the Chinese because, you know, they murdered my family or whatever. No, 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 no it's you. a planetary like, yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and and then at the point where she's like, you know, after she met the Mike Evans guy, then I went, oh no, this is going to be a bigger thing because he's very much saying, you know, um, we're just a, you know, it's it's the what do you call it, it's the Agent Smith virus thing. That's Mike Evans is Agent Smith, where he's like, human beings are disease. Yeah. He doesn't say that, but he might as yeah. well be saying it. And so at that point, I went, oh no, oh no, they're they're coming to kill everything. <laughs> okay, got it, you know. And then, and then, as soon as the the thing started with with uh, Brazil, where where it's like, what is a lie? I'm like, oh no, no, don't explain what a lie is, because then they can't trust you, and now it's all over with. Because up to that point, it did appear that what Brazil and Keiko O'Brien were doing was selecting people who would who would be able to repopulate the planet as as the the partners with the Santee. That was the idea because they had kids yeah, yeah. and they had families and all the rest of it. And that was what I think the idea was, is that they were saying, OK, if, if you, you understand these aliens are coming and you know what their purpose is and we're going to share the planet with them so that they can survive. And we, because we're welcoming them, will be spared. Now, whether that really would have happened or not because of that initial message from the one alien is hard to say. But at the very least, they probably would have let human beings live as pets but as soon as they, they knew that them. they might yeah. turn on them. Right. And, and of course, because as we find out later, we will be so advanced by the time they get here. If they think there is no capacity for trust, of course, they're going to wipe us out. So as soon as he's saying this, I'm like, reverse, reverse course. <laughs> nope. Back up. <laughs> You're all done. And man, yeah, his his terror when they stop talking to him, because he's like, my Lord, my Lord, can you hear me? My Lord, please talk to me. And it's like, nope, that's it. You just fucking drop the sword on everybody. <laughs> this plant's going to be a cinder. You know, you're going to all be well, briquettes on their fucking barbecue. So, and time well, and that's time until they is have the, the monitoring key. in place. Yes, it is. Time is the key. So, so like I said, I liked it a lot. I would recommend it. Um, far better than I expected because I. I mean, I didn't think it was going to be bad, but I didn't expect it to be of the quality. This reminds me of some of the better stuff Netflix did when it wasn't shotgunning things. Kind of like when they did the Dark Crystal series. And that was such a wonderful, basically, reincarnation of what the Dark Crystal movie was. Because if you haven't seen that and you like the Dark Crystal, you should absolutely watch it because it's phenomenal. 
this is something where it's like, wow, okay, they really put the money necessary. This this feels like an HBO production. Oh yeah, it's, it's like, like yeah, thing, an yeah. old style HBO production, you know. So if you that that's probably the best recommendation I give is yeah, if you, if you remember what HBO used to be. And can still occasionally be, but you have to be of a certain age to understand. Is it, what is I mean it like is HBO it like Lisa not, Joy and, and Jonathan Nolan did it? it? Yeah, yeah. It would not surprise me if they were involved. Your career, yeah, exactly. Yes, because there there is some wonderful writing. There's some great. The character work is fantastic. Again, I, the characters all feel very individual, but they also all make sense because sometimes when characters have a lot of differences. They don't make sense as people who would ever stick together yeah. through harsh times. And all these people do. They have they have enough common elements, not only in their science, but the people who influence them. So there's this connection, even though there are people who clearly are closer than others, uh, which makes sense too. In groups of friends, you have that. So it, it they feel like real people. And that's what carries everything else. Because yeah, you know, you're, basically it's an invisible alien that you never actually see. That, you know, is, is represented by a VR ninja woman, for all intents and purposes, who's in the game. And you have to kind of buy this threat that's 400 years away and is somewhat ethereal, except when they kind of do these shows of force, which are few and far between. And then there's, you know, the, the time warping back and forth and the kind of harsh messaging of, yeah, Platt's fucked. Come conquer it. Whatever. I'm done. Type of thing. So... Yeah, I liked it. There you I go. That's it. two. So subscribe to Netflix for a month. Two shows watch it, to watch. Cancel. Great shows. Yes, yes. I will come back with the final thoughts on Fallout, but I cannot possibly imagine it fumbles the ending in two episodes. Not when it's this consistently good. There was one. You know what? There and there was there was one name. Why did I recognize this name before? The hell was that guy's name? Okay, what did this guy? I saw this very specific director's name, Frederick E. O. Toy. Why do I know? Okay. This guy has directed some heavy stuff. Man in the High Castle, the series. The Watchmen series. Snowpiercer oh, series. Jesus the Boys. Christ. He's directed. Oh, God. The Walking Dead. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Shogun. He's directed some of that Shogun series, yeah, which I, I also hear that, is yeah. good. Yeah. So... I saw his name come up in one of the later episodes, and I went, oh, I've seen this guy before. Okay, got it. Yeah, so, yeah. Fallout, that's what I mean. Fallout, I'm fairly Good. confident. We'll I look, f- I look forward to your final review. So. We'll, we will see. So, And on that note, that's it. That's all I got this week because I wanted to make sure I talked about Three-Body Problem because I really think it is worth seeing, and uh, I didn't want to I didn't want to put Fallout over it. Plus, I haven't finished it yet. And that's it. So until next week, remember, it's not support the it's show. Support dot com. our show. Support <laughs> our show dot com. And on that note. <laughs> on that note, try not to check your spelling. Here's my everybody. final tip for the weekend, everybody. If you're going to reserve a domain, make sure you know how to spell words <laughs> in whatever language you speak. Probably a good rule of thumb generally, but what I guess I should reinforce since apparently at 40 plus 46 years old, I still can't get that one down. So yeah, always double check your domains to make sure you know how to spell on that note. Enjoy your weekend. We'll talk to you next week. Visit ozonenightmare.com to subscribe to new episodes, browse through our back catalog or to find links to support the show. Follow at ozone nightmare on Twitter for the latest episode postings and other show information. If 280 characters just isn't enough, you can always email us, theozonenightmare at gmail.com. The opening theme for the show is provided by Heartbeat Hero. The closing theme is provided by Ogre. Please visit and support these artists using the links in the show notes for each episode. 